first at the end of the first quarter of Super Bowl 22, the Denver Broncos led the Washington Redskins 10 to nothing. Then in an explosive second quarter, the Redskins started rewriting the Super Bowl record book. Quarterback Doug Williams was the leader behind a devastating offensive line. The Skins struck through the air. And they rumbled for huge chunks of yardage on the ground. As running back Timmy Smith went from a who's he to an NFL who's who. It was all choreographed by head coach Joe Gibbs making his third Super Bowl appearance in seven years as a Redskin. Duck Williams, who was looking for a new home at the start of the season, took the big prize. And the winning Redskins have not remained packed. The Chicago Bears Pro Bowl linebacker Wilbur Marshall was a stunning free agent acquisition in the offseason. He'll make a tough defense even stronger. Tonight, the Super Bowl champions beat the Miami Dolphins in Miami, Florida in a preseason game. The Dolphins, with coach Don Shula, have also known the glory and fame of the Super Bowl. But after two consecutive years out of the playoffs, the Dolphins find themselves trying to rebuild a defense to match an offense that's number one in the game. It has not been easy, and new players will be tested tonight. As we bring you live from Miami, Florida, the Washington Redskins and the Miami Dolphins. It's a warm South Florida evening. The temperature in the mid-80s. Lots of humidity with showers in the forecast. Not a fun night for football players who have been working twice a day. Joe Robbie Stadium, the Washington Redskins, and the Miami Dolphins. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Nissan Cars and Trucks. Built for the most important race of all, the human race. By Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This bud's for you. And by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. The taste adults have grown to love. They are great. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford, along with Dan Deardorff, our colleague Al Michaels, vacationing in the Pacific somewhere. Dan must be having fun over in Maui. Life is tough, isn't it? Life is tough. We're all in the tropics. We're here in Miami, and Al's in Hawaii. Good luck, Al. It'll be a tough night for these players. As I said, they've been working twice a day, but we're talking about teams, Dan, that are coming into this game from different directions, vastly different directions. Yeah, we've got the defending Super Bowl champions, Frank, and the Skins, and then on the other hand, we've got the Miami Dolphins, who certainly have been there before, but the last couple of years, just out of the play playoffs all together and lots you, of problems yeah really and if you look at Miami you're looking at a team that you know here in the Dan Marino era one of the great offensive teams in the league but defensively they have just really struggled uh, near the bottom 26 out of 28 teams and quite frankly Frank if they don't get better if that defensive team doesn't get somewhere in the middle of things the Dolphins may not make the playoffs again. Well, Dan, if I may, I could quote George Young. He said, I'll solve all Miami's problems. All they have to do is trade for Lawrence Taylor. That wouldn't hurt, would it? No, but then Dan Marino wouldn't be playing quarterback here either. He'd have to be in New York. Redskins. Okay, let's take a look at the skins. And, and what an interesting story we've got here. You've got the defending Super Bowl champions. And it's been a long, long time since we have seen a defending Super Bowl champion team that's spent an offseason in oblivion the way the Washington Redskins have. No endorsements, no books. It's been relatively quiet in D.C., and, and maybe there's a reason for that. Uh, probably no team in recent memory has won the Super Bowl with uh, an unspe uh, unspectacular season the way the Skins have. They just didn't storm into the playoffs. Once they got there, they caught fire under Doug Williams and, and won it all. And here we have a defending Super Bowl champion in the Skins that isn't even picked to win their own division here the following year. The Giants are the favorites in the NFC East. And don't think that Joe Gibbs isn't using this to his advantage. He's telling his ball club, hey, guys, you don't have universal respect around the National Football League. And I think he's using that to his advantage to motivate his ball club here in the preseason. As a motivator, there's no question about that. And the Dolphins have won the toss. They will be receiving. The Dolphins, a team that has missed the playoffs for two consecutive years and a few years ago. 
you would never have the opportunity to say that about a Don Shula led team but here they are trouble is Dan mentioned on defense primarily and they are going to be trouble again tonight with the loss of a couple of players Hugh Green who had come back into camp looking awfully good a linebacker a great pass rusher with his Tampa Bay days behind him injured when he came here two years ago but looking good he broke a couple of ribs and he's out for a while and Don Boza the number one draft pick of a year ago at defensive end will not be available for Miami defensively tonight. So not only are they looking for somebody to put the spark in that defense, they are troubled with injury. Aliaji Sheik in a battle with the top draft pick of the Redskins to win the place kicking job. That draft pick, Chip Lohmeyer, Low Miller, will be kicking off for the Redskins. And deep Lorenzo Hampton and Sean Beal. Beal's a rookie out of Idaho State. And of course, the uh, veteran Lorenzo Hampton. Sheik, high, short, and Sean Beal. Out of the 25 yard line, nailed at the 30 yard line. And out will come the Miami Dolphins. And they will do so without Dan Marino. It'll be Ron Jaworski. Marino will not play tonight. He is getting the rest that was promised him in a five-game free season for these Miami Dolphins. And there are his numbers. And he's been around a long time and a good one. Four years with the Rams, many years with Philadelphia. Picked up with the Dolphins a year ago. However, he did not play. Woody Bennett, number 34. Lorenzo Hampton, 27. The setbacks for the Dolphins. Ended, but he sprawls out close to the 35-yard line behind an offensive line that is really hurting and here is the defensive line that they will be trying to work with tonight marcus cook over the right side uh, replaced the suspended dexter manley we'll be talking about that later wilbur marshall number 58 the great chicago bear now in his fifth season the redskins fought enough of him to give up their two number one draft picks in his 14th year. Woody Bennett doesn't get the call very often, gets to the 35-yard line, usually the lead blocker for Troy Stratford, who probably will not play much tonight. And right off the bat, the question I know everyone is asking, why not Dan Marino? And Frank, you alluded to the fact that the Dolphins and three other teams have to play a five-game preseason schedule. So the Dolphins, of course, played the 49ers over in London, and and what that means is when you've got a proven veteran, a guy like Dan Marino, Don Shula quite simply says, why should I risk an injury one more time? And so Ron Jaworski, who seems to be the number two quarterback on his ball club, gets the call. Third and five with four wide receivers threatening to pass the handoff on the draw play to Jim Jensen, who moves all over the field for these Miami Dolphins. He can be a tight end. He can be a wide receiver. He can be a backup quarterback. And when you're limited in the number of players you can put in uniform, well, he's a good one to have out there. And a good look at a play that's run very often by every team in the league that uses a shotgun, the handoff underneath. You've got the defensive lineman charging upfield and a nice change of pace. That's the offensive lineman's best friend. Let those guys blow up field and find themselves out of a play. First down is at the 41-yard line. Troy Stratford, number 23. And with this is Bennett again. Bends up to the 45-yard line. And that offensive line that the Dolphins, John Sandusky's line coach, had to put on the field tonight, I think almost embarrassed him. They have a combined number of years in competition of two years as Dan Marino looks on. He'll be assisting on the sidelines. David Schuler. Schuler is also down there. He'll be calling the plays tonight, and Marino will be assisting. Ben has got about four. It'll be second and six. Lorenzo Hampton. Hampton. Gets away from Charles Mann. Taken out of bounds up close to the 47-yard line. Wilbur Marshall coming across from his offside linebacker position to make the stop. Frank, you talked about the Dolphin offensive line. What a mess these guys are finding themselves in right now. John Giesler, a veteran tackle, is unsigned. Ronnie Lee, their other tackle, at groin surgery in the offseason, and he hasn't played yet this preseason. Of course, Dwight Stevenson, maybe the best center to ever play the game, is still rehabilitating his injured knee that we saw last year on a Monday night and 
Roy Foster, their all-pro guard, injures the knee last week in practice, and he's not playing as well. Another reason why Dan Marino isn't playing tonight. And good reason for Dorsey to try to get it off quickly. Looking for Mark Clayton, it's incomplete. It would have been short of the first down at midfield in any event. Brian Davis, who probably will be working pretty closely to Mark Clayton, at least through the first part of the game. They have assigned him almost as a shadow to Clayton. A lot of time here, Dan. Yeah, he had the time. It's a timing pattern, and the ball was actually there. If you look at it from that angle, it looked like a catchable ball. And Jaworski has been very impressive. The Dolphins coaches are, are pleased with Ron Jaworski and what he's done with the club this preseason. And he's clearly their number two quarterback. And talking to Ron before the game, he says, please refer to me as a young 37. Proby puts it up high. Oliphant forced to off of the fair catch, which he executes at about the 27-yard line. And the Redskins will have their first possession. 26-yard punt for Roby. Skins will be up their own 28-yard line when we return. Skins comes onto the field as quarterback for these Redskins. The story so well told so many times over. The Cinderella story of a year ago. Great performance in the Super Bowl. I'm going to take a real good look at Doug Williams at halftime. Lynn Swan went down to his hometown of Louisiana. Talked to a lot of people that knew him when he grew up. And did he grow up? Four Super Bowl records and a 42-10 victory over Denver in Super Bowl 22. First and 10, the Redskins, the ball near their own 28-yard line. Jimmy Smith over the right side. Another Super Bowl hero for these Redskins, over 200 yards rushing. Shattering the old mark. And defensively, and here, are where are the problems lie for the Miami Dolphins? It's not a real physical group. Turner, Soche, and Kumaro. The linebackers are missing Hugh Green, who normally would be starting in place of Bob Rudzinski, and a pretty decent secondary, yet not a real physical, not a hard-hitting group. A couple of good contenders back there, youngsters who are looking to become starters for these Dolphins. Smith again over the right side, and Smith gets out over the 35-yard line, near the 37-yard line, a little short of the first down. Opperdahl made the stop on Smith. Actually, it was the 14th game of the last season that Timmy Smith really emerged as the type of player that he turned out to be in the Super Bowl. It was right here when the Redskins came down to play the Dolphins. The Dolphins beat them, and Timmy Smith gained 46 yards in that game, and he, of course, went on to run wild in the playoffs in the Super Bowl. Third and one. Smith. Right side just powers up near the 39-yard line. He'll have the first down. Hofferdahl there, along with Lankford on the south. Well, if Don Shula wants a measurement or a gauge as to how far his defensive team is coming, this is certainly the team to play in the Washington Redskins. One of the most physical ball clubs on the line of scrimmage. Don Shula knows his defensive team has been manhandled before, and those of us that think back to the Super Bowl and the way this Redskin offensive line just humiliated the Broncos up front, I think before this evening's over, we'll find out if the Dolphins have made any progress. First down. A little counter play to Smith. Over the left side, big Joe Jacoby's over there working, and Smith is out over the 40 to the 41-yard line before Brzezinski makes the stop. You talked about Timmy Smith and what he did in that Super Bowl, and I mean, you start talking about going over 200 yards in a, in a game of that magnitude. He also was the beneficiary, Frank, of the best line play that I've ever seen in a big game. They were awesome. Unbelievable. He went through holes that, that you and I could have skipped through hand in hand. Well, I perhaps could have skipped through there. <laughs> well, maybe I lost my head for a minute. Second down and eight. Not getting motion. Jimmy Smith working hard, and the stop is by Brzezinski and the roar from the crowd. They don't stop too many football players. And they've had a tough time. Brzezinski coming now from the right side. He played for so many years over the left side, but Rick Graff has moved over there. Rick Graff is about 6'5", and perhaps a little stronger against the run, and Brzezinski now is over the right side. But he's really in there because of the injury to Hugh Green. Yep. They are expecting great things from. That was the counter gap play that the Skins run probably 15 times a ball game, and an effective way of stopping it. Brzezinski coming from the backside. 
Kelvin Bryant, 24, in the Redskins' backfield. If you follow the Redskins, you know he's a good receiver out of the backfield. Brad Williams. Going to Gary Clark. Langford was with Clark. And Bud Brown, the free safety, was in there helping. So Williams, unsuccessful in his first pass attempt. And the punting unit will come on for Washington. Williams, never a high percentage passer. Likes to throw deep. But he seldom, if ever, will give you that sack. Well, it, you know, he's unselfish. And I think there are certain quarterbacks in the game that have a reputation as a guy who'll throw the ball away to not put his team in, in bad field position. Doug Williams is, is certainly one of those guys. His numbers may be not as impressive as others, but I think if you ask his teammates, they say he's my guy. Doc hits it. Waiting, waits for it at the 16-yard line. Doc Swady out of the 21-yard line to the 22-yard line. Reggie Branch hustles down there for the Redskins to make the stop. and the Dolphins was also here at Joe Robbie Stadium December the 20th in the fourth quarter. Miami was leading Washington 16 to 14 when George Rogers went in from two yards out to make it Washington 21, Miami 16. With 107 remaining in the fourth quarter, Dan Marino looks into the end zone. Mark Duper is there. Miami defeats the Washington Redskins in an upset 23 to 21. 829 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Joe Robbie Stadium, Miami, Florida. The Miami Dolphins. First and 10 at their own 22-yard line against the Washington Redskins. Corey Stratford. The sensational rookie of a year ago out of Boston College. The rookie of the year in the NFL. Works his way out to the 25-yard line. Gain of about four. It'll be second down and six. What a year he had. Well, and the way he fits into this Dolphin offense, uh, a versatile guy comes out of the backfield, a uh, good receiver, and, you know, you take a look at Troy Stratford, look at his physical build, and you say, well, here's a guy that fits Miami, but he wouldn't fit into the Washington scheme of things, that one-back style that they like to use. I, I don't think he could take that pounding, but here in Miami, he's the right guy. Gorky had to hurry the pass under pressure, and his intended receiver out of the backfield was Davenport, and he was popped rather severely by Wilburn. Well, Davenport just wasn't ready for the ball. Jaworski under the heavy blitz of the Redskins. Two guys came from the same side, and that happens right in front of Davenport. And when he reads blitz, he's immediately got to turn back to the quarterback and give him a target. That time Jaworski, he had no problem seeing the blitz. It was right in his face. He got the ball there, and Davenport wasn't ready. All these little timing things come along. That's yep. what you work preseason games for. Jaworski again from the shotgun. Third down and seven. Four wide receivers in the game. Worski with the blitz on. Still had time to fire and gets it out complete to Fred Banks. And Banks will have the yardage for the first down out of the 35-yard line. Not a bad pickup, Dan, considering the offensive line in front of Jaworski. Here's a good look at Mark Dennis, the right tackle, working against Charles Mann, who is the Redskins' best defensive lineman. That time, Charlie ridden effectively to the outside by Mark Dennis, a second-year guy, and he's only had two starts before. A look downfield at Freddie Banks, and <laughs> good move to the sideline. You saw the blitz coverage, and you get the blitz, you get the one-on-one, -on -one, and you had the one-on-one, -on -one and Banks was open. Jaworski delivered it. First down and 10. Hampton tries it inside. He'll lose about a yard on that, and it was hard to imagine that on a team with a quarterback called Dan Marino, you have a little bit of a quarterback controversy. Don Strock was given his outright release. He was here for 15 years, and he is now gone. So there's a battle to see who's going to be behind Marino. Shula says he's going to keep three Dan. Jaworski and Dave Archer and Kerwin Bell are battling for those spots. Well, I think Jaworski has got this ball club made. I, I, I would be really surprised if Ron Jaworski isn't here when the season started. I think Don Shula has, a, has developed a pattern of wanting that veteran guy on the sidelines in case something happens to Dan Marino. I think that guy's Ron Jaworski. Oh, Blitz. Good pick up. And Jaworski has the time and delivers it. Gets it out to James Pruitt, the athletic wide receiver for these Dolphins. But more importantly, and John Sandusky, the offensive line coach, but the Dolphins had to be a little pleased with that. They brought everybody. Yeah, they really did. And the protection was there. And this is a guy you're going to hear a lot about with the Miami Dolphins, James Pruitt. He's just a third-year guy from Cal State Fullerton, and he's been troubled in the past by 
being a little bit erratic, sometimes dropping the easy pass. He caught a couple of touchdowns last week in their game against the Bears, and with the holdout of Mark Duper, sometimes that's all the opportunity a guy needs, and this man, number 82, James Pruitt, may be a major star here in Miami. Seven-yard pickup, gonna be third down and a long three. Ball resting close to the 43-yard line of the Dolphins. Stratford cuts back, looking to go against the grain and gets the first down. He comes up short near the 44-yard line. Alvin Walton, a big hitter in the secondary, getting help when Marcus Cook made the stop. You know, something I want to keep an eye on during the course of the evening, and we'll keep following it, is the story of Wilbur Marshall. Frank touched on it early about Wilbur Marshall and his arrival in Washington, D.C., but Wilbur's really been a non-factor. And here now we've seen a couple of series with the Dolphins offensively. We haven't even mentioned Wilbur's name. We're going to have to... Wilbur hasn't been real active since his arrival in Washington. Reggie Roby, his second punt of the night, and this one he catches, it turns over, puts the distance on it. Oliphant inside the 15. And good hustling coverage on the part of Miami. Oliphant, the rookie from Puget Sound, gets out over the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Redskins. Former great linebacker with the Steelers and Redskins. Now coaching with the Redskins, talking it over with the boys of the defense. Meanwhile, the Redskins with no score in this ball game. 5:21 remaining in the first quarter. Ever first and ten. Ball near their own 20-yard line. Monk in motion once again. Williams a lot of time and looking for a Didier. Over the middle, it's incomplete. Working the inside for the Dolphins, John Offerdahl, a Pro Bowl linebacker, and he's the key to the Dolphin defense. And you saw in that time, bite on the run, actually take two steps towards the line of scrimmage, and yet still have the athletic ability to get back and interfere with Clint Didier trying to run straight down the field. Now, Frank, you know there aren't many athletes that can hesitate that long at the line of scrimmage like Offerdahl did and still get in the play. Number 81, offense, penalty is declined, second down. Art Muck, number 81 for the Redskins. Our referee tonight, Bob McElwee. And Joe Gibbs had a remarkable career now going into his eighth year. Three Super Bowl appearances. Victories in a pair of them. Second down and ten. Didier on the move again. Williams as Didier works underneath. Out to close to the 28-yard line, Jackie Ship, the other inside linebacker from Miami in on the south. The this Dolphins is quite a match up here, a mismatch, one of the other Dan. Yeah, it really is. The Dolphins' number one draft choice. You can't even see him behind Joe <laughs> Jacoby. And keep in mind that Kumaro, number 90, is 6'7 and 260. That's how big Joe Jacoby is. This guy doesn't even show up. The Dolphins tried him at linebacker, put him in a defensive end, and he is going to have some evening. Going head-to-head -head with number 66. What a load Joe Jacoby is. Third down and three. Kelvin Bryant. And stop short of the 30-yard line and short of the first down. And an ovation goes up from a pretty good crowd here on a very warm Saturday evening in August. J.T. Turner and Kumaro both on the stop. They're sophisticated football fans here in Miami. They know this team of theirs is going nowhere if they don't get some better defensive play like we talked about at the top of the show. The defending world champions, they're going to have to deal with being just that. They want to, every team in the league would like to have the skins as a notch on their gun. But they have been down that road before. Steve Cox to punt again, deep to Jarvis Williams, a rookie second round draft pick for the Dolphins out of Florida. And he has a good shot at starting Perhaps at safety for these Miami Dolphins. Good, tough football player. Makes the fair catch out near the 37-yard line. Good defensive player, Jarvis Williams. Fine return man. The Dolphins get the football back. The Dolphins haven't tried to run. As you can see, five different running backs have led the team in rushing over the past five years. Troy Stratford, however, even though Dan Mitchell is not all that big in stature, he seems to have found the home. He seems to be the man that they're going to count on again this year. Dolphins first down at 10. The ball near the 38-yard line. No score here in the first quarter. Woody Bennett 
Sutter Depp looks around, gets out over the 40-yard line. Pick up of about five. It'll be second down and five. Wilbur Marshall still looking around out there, Dan. Yeah, we promised to keep an eye on Wilbur, and here he is taking on the block out front of Hampton, and I guess effective in the sense that he turned it back to the inside, but I think Wilbur Marshall still not quite sure of himself here in Washington. New terminology, the numbers have been flip-flopped compared to what he was used to dealing with in Chicago, and any time a football player has to deal with a little bit of hesitancy before the snap of the football, he's, he's not going to be as good as he can be. And this guy is good. He went as an eight with the Bears and a nine here. It's difficult. Second down and five. Duarte finds Pruitt. Pruitt close to a first down. It is turning right at the first down marker. Probably should have got himself another yard or two. It would have helped. Here's Pruitt again, going against Brian Davis. A lot of speed on the part of Brian Davis. Second round draft pick of a year ago. And Pruitt would have been better advised to have taken that upfield another couple of yards. Then when he comes back for it, Jaworski would have had his first down. And I'm sure he'll hear that when he comes to the sideline. Don Shulin is 26 years. One losing season. And it has been a troubled couple of years, however. And that's what Pruitt missed by not driving upfield a little further. It would have been no more difficult against Brian Davis. And that's what every receiver coach will tell you. He's just a great athlete. And they expect so much of him in the years to come. Third down, you saw how much. 2.23 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Bennett and Hampton, the setbacks for Ron Jaworski. Bennett pulls his way up near the 50-yard line. And a good surge that time by the Dolphin offensive line. This is a group that you might uh, think because of their youth is a little mismatched up front but really they won the battle that time the blue shirts moved the white shirts backwards wilbur marshall down in a three-point stance in a short yardage situation and wilbur down on the ground and out of the play that's not the play you'd expect from a pro bowl caliber linebacker you got to fight the block off but you've got to keep your shoulders square and you got to stay up tough to tackle a guy when you're on the ground that was a rookie tied in brian kenton who laid a pretty good block on marshall First down to midfield, Jaworski under pressure, settles in the pocket and fires. Complete out to the 41-yard line of the Redskins to Fred Banks. Well, the Dolphins aren't stupid. They see the amount of cushion that they're being given by the Redskin cornerbacks, and they're just going to make those little turn-ins as, as long as they can, and they're going to run it until they're forced to stop it. When you can't even see the cornerback in the picture, it's a pretty effective pattern to just run out there 10 yards and stop. Just a shame the pass from Jaworski was a little bit behind Banks, and he had to go back and go down to his knees to catch it. Brian Davis again on the coverage. Banks just less than a yard short of the first down. Bradford, that characteristic bouncing and shuffling at the line of scrimmage, and then the burst of speed. Uh, takes him inside the 35-yard line for another Dolphin first down. Dan, I am, quite frankly, a little surprised with the ease that offensive line is working against what we know to be the first unit and the better, one of the better defensive lines around. That time they went right at Charles Mann and, and were effective picking up the yard. Again, let's bring you up to date that we've got a new clock system in play this year in the National Football League at the conclusion of the play and i mean immediately at the conclusion of a play we now start a 45 second clock and we see it in the background but it won't run down because that's the end of the first quarter but new in effect this year dolphins moving surprisingly well against the redskins we'll be back to joe robbie stadium for the second quarter after a message and a word from our local station we're back in miami once again and a sad note Edward Bennett Williams, the former owner of the Washington Redskins and current owner of the Baltimore Orioles, has died tonight. He was 68 years old, great friend of everyone in sports, a brilliant attorney. And 
he will sorely be missed. Wonderful man. Edward Bennett Williams dead at the age of 68. Dalton's on first down and 10. Jaworski with the receiver open and off the fingertips of uh, the defender. Wilbur Marshall, who was back there, and it goes to the rookie third round draft pick that they are so high on here in Miami, Farrell Edmonds, 6'6", the rookie from Maryland. Well, I know that, that pass just floated out of the hands of Jaworski. That really should have been intercepted. I don't know if the ball's a little wet and slipped out or whatever, but look at that ball float, and it's severely underthrown, and Wilbur has a pretty good play on it. Would have been a great interception, but the luckiest man in the stadium right there is Ron Jaworski. That easily could have been picked off, and good concentration by Edmonds to stay with the ball and make the catch. The first down is near the 17-yard line of the Redskins. And a fake reverse, and Hampton puts the ball away, turns up field inside the 15-yard line, close to the 14-yard line. Jim Jensen was coming around on the reverse fake. Our ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you tonight by Nissan Cars and Trucks, built for the most important race of all, the human race. Delighted you're with us. Frank Gifford along with Dan Deardorff, our colleague Al Michaels over on the island of Maui vacationing and a well-deserved vacation indeed for the hard-working oh, man. Give me a break. <laughs> well, I, that's what it says right here. He wrote it before he left. <laughs> Second down and seven. Jaworski trying to get it into Pruitt the athletic one in the corner of the end zone and Brian Davis equally as athletic right there with Pruitt incomplete. Well even veteran quarterbacks at the young age of 37 will still force the ball and I don't know that Ron Jaworski should have just let that one fly over everyone's head. I think he was just depending on Pruitt going up to take it away from Brian Davis. But Davis however 6'2 and as we talked about earlier he's quite an athlete. Yeah but when he's got the inside position as we look at Richie Pettibone the defensive coordinator of the skin I don't know Davis was in perfect position to play that pass. He played it well. Yeah you're asking Pruitt to come over the top over the back that's asking a lot. Dworsky will put it up again blitz on by the skin. There's a man all alone in the corner. Oh and in and out of the hand. It's Troy Stratford who caught 48 balls a year ago and it was right off his fingertips. No one feels worse about that than Troy Stratford. Good pick up again on the blitz. Plenty of time for Jaworski to get it out to the man. Alvin Walton came in on the blitz and as Frank said, the Dolphins gave him the production. And what a perfect throw that time by Ron Jaworski. Look at the spiral, look at the placement of the ball and I don't know. Stratford looked it all the way into his hands and, and, and just dropped it. I, the easy ones are so difficult Ooh, sometimes. What a play by Jaworski, though. That, that's a big-time play. Bod Reve is on. Now in his fourth year. Didn't miss last year from inside the 40-yard line. And on a 32-yard effort, he did not miss early here in the second quarter as the Miami Dolphins take a 3 to nothing lead over the Washington Redskins. We'll be right back. A muffed punt, which is recovered at midfield by Matt Munger of the Jets, who proceeds down the sideline until he is dragged down by the face mask. Now you make the call. Where do you spot the ball? Uncle Alex, this store is a lot bigger than your old one. You betcha. Warm parts, bigger inventory. Maybe you should get an IBM PS2. Huh, what do you want me to do, throw out my old PC? They'll work together. And my PC software? It'll run it and a lot faster. You're kidding. You know, I could use extra capacity. Maybe I should get a PS2. Congratulations. Oh. Oh. You didn't. I did. The Personal System 2, part of the bigger picture for your growing business from IBM. What call did you make? A muffed punt can be recovered but not advanced by the kicking team. From the point of recovery at 15 yards for the flagrant face mask foul and spot the ball at the 35. Following the 1972 season, fourth quarter, Miami leading Washington 14 to nothing. A Garo Yapremian field goal was blocked. Garo fields the ball, tries to make like Bob Greasy. Mike Bass picks it off and takes a 49 yard for a Redskin touchdown. But Miami prevails 14 to 7. The win kept Miami perfect 17 and 0 season. A moment of glory for the little tie salesman, Garo Yapremian. Back at Joe Robbie Stadium. Dolphins are on the scoreboard, 13-16. Remaining here in the first half. They lead the Redskins 3-0. Quad Rebays to kick off. Daryl McGill, a rookie out of Wake Forest, is deep for the Redskins. Rebays 
carries it to the three-yard line, and here comes McGill. And there goes McGill at the 19-yard line. Boy, you see so much of that in the preseason when they have a lot of numbers out there, and these teams are both up around 65 players. It pays to go out there. On, you're on a special team to really unload. Boy, you're right. A good look here at what faces the Washington Redskins. Just stop and think about it. None of those teams has won a postseason game since they won the Super Bowl. That That is really hard to believe. And they made it even more difficult for the Redskins by toughening up their schedule. They yeah. their schedule changed a couple of years ago, and it comes into effect, and will play against the Redskins this year. They've got to get to the playoffs first. Seth Williams hands off over the right side on first down and 10. Offerdahl makes the stop on Timmy Smith. Timmy Smith, what a find he was. Like another Bobby Beathard, if you will. He came out of Texas Tech as a fifth-round draft pick, had missed almost all of his junior year with a bad knee. Much of his senior year, they never really thought much about him in the National Football League, but they all know him now after that incredible performance in the Super Bowl. Averaged over six yards to carry all the way through the playoffs. On second and nine. Smith again. Backed up out of the 24-yard line. That's where they'll mark his progress. Don Offerdahl in. Dan, I, <laughs> I don't know what it would be for the last couple of years if it hadn't been for Offerdahl. If they hadn't had this man, he has been their defense. Takes a look at the sidelines, gets the calls, but again, let's spot like Eric Kumaro, their number one draft choice, working against Joe Jacoby. Jacoby goes for the outside position and actually turns him over to Raleigh McKenzie on the inside, who gives him a little bit of a lesson of uh, what it's like in the National Football League. You can't get hooked as a defensive end by the guard who's a full man removed to the inside. That's, that's a double minus. Third down and six. Doug Williams, lots of time. Wide open, Kelvin Bryant out the 45-yard line. Good receiver out of the backfield. Not the kind of back you want in there all the time. Really not that sturdy. Not a Timmy Smith. Does not have that kind of strength, but he has all the finesse. Oak Tree is taking its toll. It got windy out there today, and the score has really changed. We're going to talk to well, our colleague. I like to say that. Our colleague, Jack Nichols, not as a golfer, but as a broadcaster. At halftime, we'll be visiting with Jack. Paul Azinger right on top at the moment. Right. Oak Tree came to life today. I could have won the PGA, except I had to be down here doing this game. I understand. On first down, Williams fires a beautiful shot of complete to Art Monk. We've seen that before. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> pass by Doug Williams. Waited, waited, took a shot after he delivered it, but he threw it to the sprinting Art Monk, 53-yard touchdown. It's just Monk coming all the way across the field. Picks up man-to-man -man coverage, you see, out on the outside. And out race, I believe it was Lankford, and... Well, it's real easy. This is Art Monk lining up. He's going to come down, just make his break, and work all the way. Takes the pass right here. And again, loose coverage by the Dolphins. But this is the toughest on man-to-man -to -man when you got to cover somebody all the way across the middle. And when the guy is in position, just a half a step behind can be too much if the pass is perfect. And that's what it was that time by Doug Williams. Ali Haji Sheik. Hit for the conversion. And the Redskins, just like that, with a 53-yard shot from Doug Williams, Art Monk have taken the lead. Another look at Art Monk. John Offerdahl working underneath and just can't get there. And again, Doug Williams picking up where he left off at the Super Bowl. Picture perfect, Art Monk and another skin score. Miami. There's J.T. Turner catching a little fan as he sits on the bench. As the Redskins prepare to kick off, their top draft pick, Chip Miller, will kick off, and deep Lorenzo Hampton and Sean Beal. Hampton. And Hampton down at the 10-yard line. Reggie Branch hustling down there once again. Lorenzo's been around long enough to know that that's, that's a move that seldom works, and I hope he's not hurt. He's getting up awful slow, but... Well, he appears to be all right heading over the sidelines, a little shaken, but doesn't often pay to start up the field and then try to go parallel, trying to make something happen on a kickoff return. 
little plus from Low Miller, who again I mentioned is the top draft pick of the Redskins. He had that ball very high. It held up, and the coverage got down under it. He can really put the foot to the football. He has kicked the 62-yard field goal in college. Good athlete. I think we're going to see a lot of him. Dolphins first and ten at their own ten. Jaworski under pressure, but he delivers it out to Bennett. And Bennett up close to the 20-yard line. Again, we've talked so much about the Dolphin offensive line and how it's wrecked with injuries. Charlie Mann, again, working this time against the right tackle. That's Mark Dennis, and that's the rip move where you throw that right arm in there and effectively done that time by Charles Mann, although he gets to Jaworski after he's released the ball. But, Frank, that, that's a good move. Number 80 was the rookie, Farrell Edmonds, and he played it like a rookie. He absolutely had no idea what he was doing at the moment. He could have helped Mark Dennis. He didn't. Second down and two. Very Stratford, nifty run over the right side. Just squirts out of a hole up to the 26-yard line for a Dolphin first down. Brian Davis, Alvin Walton on the stop. I'll say this. They're going right at Charlie Mann. That time they trap Mann who goes upfield, and then the guard coming across the formation, Harry Galbraith, traps man, takes him to the outside, and Stratford played that perfectly. Ducks right in off the rear end of his pulling guard and gets upfield for Dolphin first down. And it was Farrell Edmonds, the rookie from Maryland, the tight end, who came down on Okowitz and made that run possible. So Edmonds makes a mistake, and then he atones for it with a good block. And Stratford gets the first down at the 26-yard line. Well, Charles Mann is saying, hey, guys, uh, don't you know I went to the Pro Bowl last year? What are you guys doing coming at me time after time after time? This time, the penetration by both Mann and Butts forces a, a loss in the backfield. He sheds the block of Farrell Edmonds, the rookie, and gets in on the play. And that's the second time, Frank, we've seen on this drive that Edmonds hasn't wanted a whole lot to do with this guy, Charlie Mann. But, Dan, how about his playoff game against the Bears? He had 10 tackles, 3 sacks. He is legitimate all the way. And Wyatt. Is, and has to operate in the shadow of Dexter Manley, who makes more money and gets more publicity. But I don't know if he's any more solid. There is Mann again. And that that is a world-class move to the inside, as he just gave a clean whiff to the inside to Mark Dennis, who didn't have a clue. And if it hadn't been Mann, it would have been Marcus Cook, who is filling in for the injured Dexter Manley. The they quickest got there at the same time. Well, the quickest way the quarterback is to the inside. Watch man go upside, get Dennis to the outside, and then right inside to Jaworski. Watch how clean this is. I'm not sure that Dennis even gets much of a lick oh, on man. You convince the tackle that you're going to go upfield, and then you make your move to the inside. And when you have the kind of quickness that Charles Mann has, you have the ability to make a tackle look real bad. Loss all the way back to the 11-yard line. It's third down, 25. And Jaworski rolls out trying to get time to deliver the ball. He does upfield. The Scotch played is far short of the necessary yardage. And the punting, punting unit will come out. Well, this time, Jaworski rolls towards Charles Mann. But let's count how many people hit him. Okay, there's the right tackle, Dennis. There's Jim Jensen who gets involved as well. And let's bring the center all the way out. That's Jeff Dellenbach, and he's going to take a piece of man. Jensen comes back in for another lick. Well, man, four, four, four different around. shots. And he thinks Dexter Manley got a bad deal. Roby from inside his five-yard line. Mike Oliphant with a low kick will have time from his 45. And can do nothing with it. Gets out to about the 48-yard line as David Fry hustling down there for Miami made the stop. Good field position for the Redskins when we come back. He's in play around the league. Let's take a look at it. Dallas over the Raiders. That's final at 27-17. Cleveland over Tampa Bay. Green Bay over Indianapolis. Cincinnati over Buffalo. And Kansas City over Atlanta. Other games. Houston over New England. And the Giants over the Jets. Games coming up later on the West Coast. First down and 10, the Redskins, they need 7-3 to three on their own 49-yard line. Doug Williams flips it over the middle to Caravello, former nose tackle who's been turned into an H-back, a tight end. And there is a man who has had a troubled night dealing with one Charles Mann, the right tackle for the Dolphins, Mark Dennis. 
He's taking a little stroll, composing himself. Yeah, he may be walking out. I don't know. I, that's a tough spot. Young guy trying to go against an all-world player like Charles Mann. It's so easy to get your dauber down a little bit. He'll be back. We'll follow it the rest of the game, too. Ten put their first down at the 40-yard line of the Dolphins. Doug Williams, a lot of time, fires over the middle. And it was Terry Orr just taking his eyes off that football. Williams had it right in there, about waist high. One that you have to watch into your hands if you're going to catch. It'll be second down and ten. Uncharacteristic for the Redskins throwing the ball on first down. They're pretty predictable at running the ball on first down. The key is trying to stop them. That's that's not so easy. Predictable in preseason. During the season, not quite so predictable. Second and ten. Williams left is on by Mammy. And reading it well was Williams. But it was good coverage by William Judson, who was stride for stride with Ricky Sanders. Yeah, Judson really played that well. The blitz is on. It's clearly a man coverage situation. A cornerback like Judson knows that. He has to adjust his coverage. And the throw from Williams is right there. But the inside position, looking for the ball, just perfectly played by Judson, except he's got to catch the football. I mean, he becomes the receiver in that situation. And that's the kind of play a veteran corner has to make. They're down in 10. Funny to play a guy that well and have a coach give him a minus and a chewing out. That's what Judson will get. Again, Williams, a lot of time. Sanders once again with a great move on the inside. This time he really turned Judson around, spun him around. Judson fell, slipped away, and Sanders was wide open. Sanders gave him a little drive to the inside. Judson loses him, slips and falls, and he's all alone. Well, just look at look at the alley A that Williams says, the time he has. I mean, we're talking about patterns where these receivers are lining up for Washington clear on the other side of the formation. They're running laterally all the way through the Dolphins secondary, and Williams, when he's not even rushed, hey, sure he's going to put that ball there every time. It's like practice, facing no pass rush. First and 10 on a 24-yard pickup, and Timmy Smith over the right side, breaks it down, down inside the 15, close to the 12-yard line. Well, it's nothing new that opposing quarterbacks have a lot of time to find receivers. Now, you're looking at this thing, what is this? Well, I want you to take a look at this guy, because that's Reggie White, number 92, the defensive lineman from the Philadelphia Eagles. And what's significant about this is last year, Reggie White had 21 sacks in the 12 games that he played. That's how many sacks the entire Dolphin defensive team had in 15 games. They are, to put it bluntly, inept at rushing the quarterback. Timmy Smith on second down and six. Crawls inside the 10-yard line of the nine. It'll be third down and three. And you know, Dan, over three years, they've only had 92. So it wasn't just last year. They have been a troubled team finding somebody to rush the passer. Look to the right column. Second one down. There's Miami with their 21 sacks. Only Atlanta was worse. But look over on the other side. Richard, I mean, Richard Dent with 12 and a half, but Reggie White leading the show with 21. And he did that, folks. Keep in mind, he didn't play in the three replacement games. He did that in only a dozen games. And putting that in perspective, your good teams, your playoff teams, your Bears, your Giants, they're going to be in the 50s when you're talking sacks. Oh, 60s and 70s even for some of those clubs. Third down and three. Redskins leading seven to three here in the second quarter and on the move again. Williams time and that's what we talked about all the time you would ever want even though it's incomplete Williams looked at one receiver looked it off knew he should have completed it because Sanders was there working against Don McNeil Ricky Sanders he of the tremendous Super Bowl gets grabbed from behind by McNeil a good shot of McNeil getting caught a little bit out of position and he easily could have been flagged for holding on the play but again Doug had it in there and we're going to once again we'll remind you a good look at a very extraordinary young man in Doug Williams when we get to our halftime segment. We'll also get a good look at Jay Schrader, who told me before the game he's going to play the entire second half for the Redskins. Ali Haji Sheik on a 26-yard attempt. But it up and splits the uprights. And Ali Haji Sheik, who is 
dueling for a job with the Redskins' top draft pick, Chip Low Miller. And there is Jay Schrader. Dan was talking about him. Of course, had a sensational year in 86, went to the Pro Bowl, and of course, the well-publicized troubles a year ago, separated shoulder in the very first game. Doug Williams came in. He came back, and after that, it was all downhill. He just couldn't, he just couldn't get it done. Well, the, he's had to leave for different reasons, but keep in mind, Frank alluded to his Pro Bowl year of 86. He threw for 4,109 yards. There are not many guys sitting on the bench that have had 4,000-yard seasons. There's been a lot of publicity recently about Al Davis and the Los Angeles Raiders making a play for Jay Schrader. Uh, I don't see any way that Joe Gibbs is willing to trade Jay Schrader with Given the health of Doug Williams, the problems that he has had with his knee, Frank, I don't see any way this guy trades Jay Schrader. No way. If anyone can handle it, Joe Gibbs. He has a way about him with players, and he seems to be perfectly content with what has transpired between the two players, even though Schrader was a former starter, as we mentioned. Williams has the job now. Schrader feels he can compete. You said that. Gibbs said he can compete. And it's not a bad situation. If something happens to quarterback, I mean, to Doug Williams, and things do happen to quarterbacks where well, you've got a Schrader to go to. What's a big help to Joe Gibbs is you're dealing with two quality people at Williams exactly. and Schrader. Keith. It's a bad kick, and it is Bruce Hardy, the tight end, who will take it out close to the 30-yard line. With 4.55 remaining here in the first half. And next Monday night, we'll be in Dallas, the Chicago Bears, and we'll be looking at the Bears against the Dallas Cowboys. Again, at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And Herschel Walker and Jim McMahon, we presume, will be going for the Bears. We understand he slipped off the sidewalk over in Sweden and hurt his ankle a little bit. And Kenny Wolf, our producer, will be heading to Dallas at least a week early to get in some early work on that game. First down at 10, wide open over the middle is Edmonds, a rookie from Maryland. Look at this side go. Hello. The third round draft pick. Jaworski picked him up. They were trying to cover him off the line with a linebacker. You can forget it. He's big, 6'6", 248. He wears a size 16 shoe. And he really got those shoes motoring. 71-yard touchdown. Frank, that's one of the simplest patterns in the game. Here's Edmonds right here. He's just going to take an inside release and get the ball right here. This is a play that you used to run all the time in high school football, but you very seldom see it in the pros for one reason. An outside linebacker shouldn't allow a tight end that easy of a release, but look at the speed Edmonds had after he got open. He blew by Alvin Walden, the strong safety, and Walden did not pick up one yard on him in a 50-yard sprint. Pervade. Off for the conversion. It's supposed to be a little tougher to get off the line of scrimmage than that. He can run a 4640, <laughs> and he weighs around 250. Third round draft pick. Well, we knew it before the game, and just listening to the Dolphin coaches, this guy's got this ball club made. He's going to be here, and plays like this don't hurt at all. Look at Walton. He's number 40. He'll come back into your screen, but only in pursuit. And he looked to the outside, did Walton, and releasing to the inside was Edmonds, and it was a full sprint, and Edmonds won that one. Tight ends aren't supposed to be able to outrun safeties like that. Four-year starter at the University of Maryland. Well scouted, and you kind of wonder how somebody with the talent that he's shown here in Miami would be around, well, in the third round. I guess it's safe to say he doesn't look like that on every play. Well, he has performed awfully well down here. They are so high on him. Remains to kick off. Reminder at halftime, which is the 4.44 remaining here in the second quarter. We'll be taking an in-depth look at Doug Williams. We'll be talking with Jack Nicholas about the ongoing PGA and the fourth and final round coming up tomorrow. Ravage hits it. This is Darrell McGill. Breaks it out to the 30-yard line. Nice return, and I believe we're going to see a new quarterback. As Mark Rippon, second-year quarterback out of Washington State, but actually he's been in the injured reserve for a couple of years, who has looked awfully good last week. Came in and rallied the skins when they were down 31-6 to against the Steelers. He was 16 of 27 for 210 yards. 
got them back into that ball game, even though they went on to lose it. Guy could play linebacker, too, if he gets tired of playing quarterback. Well, he's a 6'4", 235. Would you say, Howard? Right. Jimmy Smith remains. He'll get considerable work, obviously, this evening, as Smith gets to the 32-yard line. Jimmy Smith getting uh, shoved and jostled a little bit by the Dolphin defense here. It J. seems that Turner. They've had, uh, they may have had a little talking to on the sidelines from their defensive coordinator, Tom Olivadotti, and uh, let's see if uh, we get a little more pushy shovey going on down here on the field. Second down and eight at the 33-yard line. Make it to 32 of the Redskins. Rippin steps back into the pocket. Good move. Terry Orr should have caught that football. Again, he knew he was going to get hit, but that's one of the things you have to do, particularly when you're trying to make a football team. You come across the middle, you know you're going to get it, so you may as well just concentrate on the football. Jarvis Williams, who is known as a hitter, the rookie from Florida, really put the wood to Terry Orr. And that was not an all-star effort by Orr. He, uh, that was an all-star effort Jarvis. to avoid Jarvis. He saw Williams coming and appeared to pull up a little short, and we used to call those alligator arms. Meanwhile, Rippon put it right in his hand. Rippon now facing his third down and eight. Lots of time for Rippon, and the whistles blow. And they have not been able to get that ball off on time. They did not. We have the 45 seconds, and it doesn't matter whether it's a deep pass or not. When they indicate the clock is starting, you had 45 seconds, and they did not make it. Take a little while to get used to that, then. Well, actually, a lot of the coaches like it. They think they're going to have as much time or more than they normally do. Now, if you were observant right there, you noticed that it was a 30-second clock. But that's what it's going to be any time the clock is stopped. After a penalty, as we just had, we'll go back to the conventional 30-second clock to get it in place. After administrative act by an official, you have 30 seconds. Third down, a long three. Rippon under pressure. Rifles it out into the flat. <laughs> have you been watching Eric Fumero? This, this poor guy is, is, is having his lunch handed to him here today, I'm afraid. He's hoping to get to halftime because Jacoby might not go in the second half. Again, this time Kumaro is sunk to the inside working against Raleigh McKenzie. He has a good idea trying to go to the inside, but he ends up right in the face of Eric Coyle, another one of the skinned linemen who treats him rather unceremoniously. Right at the far inside, he got outside on the other side. <laughs> Why? Well, he did. He, was, he went so far inside, he got outside on the other side. McKenzie almost put him with a Redskins bench. Cox hangs it up off the side of his foot, but it does take a Redskins bounce, and it's fielded there by Davis Williams, second-round draft pick from Florida, who has a very solid shot of making this football team as a free safety. And a smart play that time. He saved Miami at least 10 yards by going ahead and fielding that play, by fielding the ball, rather. He was the one that short while ago intimidated Terry Orr and he is known as a hitter. Two forty-eight remaining now in the first half. We're tied at 10 and he's even bigger than that. 305 at least is an estimate. It's a humbling experience to stand and talk to Joe Jacoby and <laughs> the Jaws again at the helm of the Dolphins. When you say that, it, he must be big. He, take my word for it. Take Eric Kumaro's word for it, too. He's your best basic who, John. Jaworski, wide open. Tried to hang it in between two defenders to Fred Banks. Now, Todd Bowles, give him credit there. That's what a safety is supposed to do. That's Todd Bowles. On that kind of a deep pattern, the corner needs help from the safety, and Bowles was right there. Barry Wilburn has the initial coverage on Banks. Play perfectly. Gives him that inside release, looks for help from his safety, and there it is. Todd Bowles came all the way over, and that's where a cornerback looks at his safety and says, hey, thanks for doing your job. 
And, of course, he was in perfect position, was Wilburn, should that move by Banks been to the outside. And we might point out that Daryl Green is not playing tonight to find cornerback, Pro Bowl cornerback for the Redskins. He has torn, has a torn muscle in the rib cage. He's not even here tonight. Second and ten. And Jawarski tries to get it over the middle to Pruitt. It's incomplete, in and out of his hands. And guess who? 17? Like you're looking in a the mirror. There's 71. Let's see if Charles Mann might try an inside move. If we take a look at this, as Big Dave Butts works his way to the inside, we'll see Charles Mann come in from the right. He's in his the face of Ron Jaworski and takes him down to the turf. It's a little bit of a tough night for the Dolphin offensive line, and I don't know that I'd want to sit and get the lecture they're going to get at halftime from John Sandusky. Third down and 10. From the shotgun, with Ron Jaworski. Slides out of the pocket. Gets it to Jessner. One hands it up. Spectacular catch. Out close to a first down. He might be just a little short. We talked about him earlier. He can do so many things on a football field. You know, it all starts up front. Jeff Dellenbach takes care of Alvin Walton on a safety blitz and gives Jensen the time to get open to the outside. But Wilbur Marshall was beaten on the play. But hey. Some kind of catch by Jim Jensen. Little sticky fingers, and keep in mind, Sikkim's been outlawed. Tough coverage for Wilbur Marshall. He is good at it. They often gave him coverage on a back when he was with the Chicago Bears. But it's tough when your back is making a sharp out move. And Don Chula with inches to go for the first down. And 2.28 remaining in the first half. Besides, he'll bring out the punting team. That's the reason why Jim Jensen is on this Dolphin Club year in and year out. There's so many different things he can do, whether it be special team play, capable of going in, playing quarterback, running back. But he has really developed into the guy they count on to be a possession wide receiver. A good illustration of why. So why, first of all, he gets away from Wilbur Marshall, who's a good defender. He's opened up a gap there for Jaworski, who was in trouble. Concentrates all the way. That's what we talk about when we say concentration. He looked that ball right into his hand. Great shot, guys. That's, that's as good as it gets when it comes to catching a football. By way of welcoming our new director, Craig Janoff, one of the finest in this game. Off the side of Roby's foot, short kick, fielded by Oliphant, but a flag is down near midfield. Relatively quiet night for our referee, Bob McElwee, and his troops. We spent some time on an elevator with Mr. McElwee, didn't we? And you, uh, about 15 of us locked into an elevator in San Diego during the Super Bowl. You talk about sweating it out. Illegal use in the hand, face mask now, five yards, and an automatic first down on the 48 defense. Face mask, and it'll work against the Redskins. And Steve Gage will be called for the face mask. Going back to that elevator, it was Bob McElwee. He really kind of took charge. The old military came out in the referee. And he was up by the doors along with Art McNally of the... What were we in there, about an hour and 10 minutes? We, we, were, in there, we were in there an hour and 20 minutes. You were brave, Dan. I thought I uh, maintained my composure pretty well. You, on the other hand, your eyes rolled up in your head. They did indeed. Well, that's a penalty that, uh, if this was a regular season game, would have Joe Gibbs, Joe Gibbs turning cartwheels over on the other side of the field. Keeps it alive for Miami. The first down is at their own 38-yard line. Look at this formation by Miami. Four wide receivers plus Jensen. Fred Banks makes the acrobatic catch in Redskin territory near the 47-yard line, working against... Barry Wilburn. And when you put those four wide receivers out there, you almost guarantee you're going to get the individual single coverage. And that's what they got. Banks working well against Wilburn. And he'll have the Dolphin first down. Two minutes warning. We'll be returning to Joe Robbie Stadium in just a moment. A penalty has kept it alive for the Miami Dolphins. And they have now advanced on a completion to Fred Banks into Redskin territory near the 48-yard line. Two minutes remaining in the half. We're tied at 10, the Super Bowl champion Redskins against the Miami Dolphins, a team Dan, that's trying to get back in the playoff picture. And a few years ago, you would never be saying that, wouldn't you? No, you really wouldn't. And 
again, here we go to this four wide receiver formation. They must call this the Marino formation. You know, he's got to love this. Four wide receivers, and then that's Jim Jensen, number 11, another receiver lined up in the backfield. Not much protection when you blitz, but it guarantees individual oh. coverage. Draw play, Jensen. Almost pops it, but he does get inside the 45 for a gain of five yards. Hurry up offense. It'll be second down and five. Two plays have been already called in the huddle. Warski. Tries to squeeze it in. Threw it the intended receiver. Actually just throwing it away, stopping the clock. As Alvin Walton and Brian Davis were both there on the coverage of James Pruitt. Kind of a shame that Pruitt and Jaworski couldn't hook up that time. They squandered one of the few times that they've had decent pass protection from the guys up front. Jaws had a clear alley downfield, and he and Pruitt looked like they had some sort of a confusion on which pattern was to be run. Still, though, I think a very impressive first half for Ron Jaworski. Considering the pressure that he's been under, I think he's played well. Both teams, three timeouts remaining. 1.40 on the clock. Third down and five, the Dolphins. The work team. Trying to get it to Pruitt once again. Good coverage this time by Brian Davis. And again, Charles Mann right there in the face of Ron Jaworski. Took an inside move on Mark Dennis and was there again. Eh? Well, it's a preseason game, and this Dolphin offensive line will... They'll be better for what's happening to them tonight. Easy for me to say sitting up here. <laughs> Reggie Roby. They better be better or they'll be gone. Hangs an eye looking for the coverage. He gets what he wanted. The fair catch called for by Mike Oliphant. As Roby gets it inside the 15, close to the 13-yard line on a 30-yard effort that will factor into your overall standings over the course of the season, but it was exactly what he wanted to do. Edgy Roby coming off the season in which he was injured in the opening game against New England, a groin injury and an ankle injury, and maybe not the typical Reggie Roby season, but he's one of the best. Doug Williams will visit with him. We'll also be talking with Jack Nicholas. PGA coming up with his final round tomorrow. Paul Azinger has a one-shot lead over Dave Rummel. And wind kicked around out there in Oklahoma, oh. and it got tough today. You watch that this afternoon, those flags on those pins were standing out straight. First and 10 Redskins from their own 13. Griffin. Jimmy Smith. And Smith gets the first down on the little screen out close to the 25-yard line. Now the Redskins are going to play a little hurry-up football. They go without a huddle, and now decided they were a little unorganized and went ahead and called a timeout. Jeff Bostic, their veteran center, realized that things were a little too chaotic and with a young quarterback like Rippon in there, decided to call a halt to it and send him to the sidelines. They liked Rippon for a long time as he chews the bat over the sidelines with Joe Gibbs. He was a sixth-round draft pick in 86. They put him on the injured reserve after a pretty good preseason. Said he had a bad knee. Into reserve again a year ago, but he's big, he's strong, and he, as I said last week, Dan, he was very effective against the Steelers. How about Joe Gibbs and his new haircut there? You know, that, uh, that thing is just starting to grow out. He uh, made a bet with his ball club last year that if they won the Super Bowl, he'd allow them to shave his head. And uh, they did so back in minicamp, and old Joe's hair is not growing at quite the rate it used to when he was a kid. That's all the longer it is <laughs> up to now. Coaches another eight years, he won't even have any. <laughs> this is a tough profession. Small price to pay, though, for a Super Bowl win, I think. Two great coaches tonight. Still in his 26th year with the Dolphins. Gibbs in his eighth with the Redskins. Ripping back again on first and ten. Green to Kelvin Bryant. Over the right side, and Bryant this time is jacked up. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Soche was there, the nose tackle, along with Opperdahl. Gain of maybe a yard, a yard and a half. Clock ticking away. I feel compelled to pass this along. The guy who applied the pressure that time to Rippon was Eric Kumaro, who got outside on Ed Simmons and put on a pretty good pass rush. And a lot of Kumaros in the Chicago area, Dan. Right. Right. No, hey, we'll be hearing from him. This guy is going to be a darn good player. Had a good pass rush last time. Second down and long eight. Rippon throws the lateral and appeared to be out to Bryant, but they blow the whistle, saying it apparently was a forward pass, and it looked very much like it could have been a lateral. 
Kelvin upset at not bringing it in. Says to Rippin, hey, I'll get it next time. Kelvin Bryant struggled through a injury rack season a year ago. Great career in the USFL before coming to the Redskins a couple of years ago. Got his gloves on tonight, though. Must be a little chill down there on the field, huh? Maybe avoid the sweat that a humid night will cause. It trickles down your wrist into your hands. I just have a hard time picturing Raymond Berry in gloves. Griffin on third and nine, wide open, deep downfield. Is Ricky Sanders, the hero, another hero of the Super Bowl with his nine receptions and a new record. Lynn Swan, of course, will be along at halftime, as he will be throughout the season. That was the previous record that Ricky Sanders broke. Lankford was expecting some different coverage. You see him just release Ricky Sanders to the inside, and I don't know if he was expecting help from the inside. Jarvis Williams, if he was supposed to be there, was very late. Because that left a sizable seam for Ricky Sanders to just become wide open and take in that pass from Rippon. And somewhat of a blown coverage in the Dolphins secondary for sure. Hands down to one timeout. And Rippon comes back. There it is, 193 yards. Lynn had 161 in, I believe it was Super Bowl 10, out of the 1975 season. And again, he'll be with us at halftime, as he will be throughout the season. Wiping tears off his cheek back behind us right now. They get them all eventually, Lynn. You like Ricky Sanders? Ask him if you like Dave Stallworth. He shook his head up and down, but I don't know if I believe him or not. Huh? <laughs> I'll ask you about Dave Stallworth a little later on. First down and 10. Griffin back again. Kelvin Bryant out of the backfield again. That appeared to be very easily catchable football. Let's spotlight Eric Kumaro again. Let's get off Kumaro. For <laughs> he is, well, luckily he's not going against Joe Jacoby. That's Ed Simmons. Yeah, look at that. That's a good move. A the backup outside. tackle, and you're darn right it is. Simmons connected, overcommitted to the inside, and Kumaro took advantage of it, made a good solid move back to the outside. He'll find home somewhere. Great All-American from Ohio State in the first round draft pick of these Dolphins. They tried him a linebacker. They have him at defensive end because of the injury to John Boza. He's getting a lesson tonight. Second down and 10, ripping back again. Throws underneath. And again, this was Anthony Allen who was looking around, knowing full well he was going to get tagged. Nine seconds remaining here in the first half. We're tied at 10. And Frank Gifford along with Dan Deardorff. And again, our colleague Al Michael, resting easily and comfortably on the island of Maui. And Dan, it was deserved. The World Series, he went right into the Super Bowl, the Olympics, right back into baseball. The man was fatigued. What I'm wondering, though, is when Al's over in Maui, who does he get to buy dinner? And who does he get to watch the satellite? <laughs> he does deserve it. He's having a good time. Third down and 10, rip it. This is Terry Orr to the 30-yard line. And Orr called timeout and got the clock stopped. Let's but do a little quick measurement here. We'd be looking at about a 47-yarder, I think. And we will see at the top draft pick. I'm quite sure of that because he can put the ball in the air for a lot of distance. Chip Lowmiller, 55th player taken in the draft. The Redskins did not have a first-round draft pick. They gave that up to the Bears along with next year's first round draft pick to get Wilbur Marshall. He's 6'3", is Bo Miller. Great golfer. Near scratch. The Kemper open. He drove the golf ball over 290 yards. Finished third in that competition. I like that part of his background. Well, the Redskins have a tough decision to make. Talking to Chuck Banker, their special teams coach earlier tonight, and right there, Chuck right there on the left. They've got a tough decision to make uh, with Low Miller. They're not sure if he's displayed the consistency to be there during the course of the regular season. Ali Hajishik has experienced that sort of pressure, and they need this kid to make a couple pressure kicks, and this is one of them. Of course, it's natural turf in RFK Stadium. This is a 47-yard effort off the natural turf. It's got the distance wide to the right. And that's the end of the first half as Chip Lowmiller misses from 47 yards out. We remain tied at 10. We'll be back. Lynn Swan, a look at Doug Williams, and Jack Nicholas will bring us up to date on the PGA. Stay with us. Mm. 
Halftime winding down. The score, Miami 10, the Washington Redskins 10, and this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Bud Light. Everything else is just the light. And by AT&T, the right choice. Miami playing their third preseason game of this young 1988 season. They beat San Francisco in London a couple of weeks ago, 27-21. And they lost to Chicago, 17-20 last week. Meanwhile, the Redskins are playing their second game. They lost to Pittsburgh last week, 44-31. Much to be learned. Of course, we've talked about it throughout the earlier part of the evening. For the Dolphins, it's let's get the defense together. Let's do something with our defense, our lack of the pass rush as we go back and take a look at the touchdown. Here is Doug Williams, who went most of the way in the first half. Settles in, took a shot, but he gets the ball to Monk. And Monk down the sideline for his first reception. It turns into a 53-yard touchdown for the Washington Redskins. A little later on, this is Jaworski firing over the middle. He gets Edmonds inside of Alvin Walton, the strong safety, and then it's just a sprint of 71 yards, and the big man can really motor. I think he surprised everybody, Frank, with his ability to distance himself from the Washington secondary. And talking to Bobby Beathard outside during halftime, he was a little upset that contact wasn't made a little earlier on Edmonds, like exactly when he caught the ball. He was blaming the Washington secondary for extremely poor coverage and allowing him to get that wide open. That, that much is fairly obvious. Verbeez hits it for Miami. Darryl McGill, a rookie from Wake Forest for the Redskins. And McGill with a nice return out over the 30-yard line. McGill, an eighth-round draft pick, looking for a job with these Redskins. And he is tackled there by Don McNeil. So we are going to be watching Jay Schrader. We told you about him earlier. And of course, the well publicized well, lack of a conflict going into the Super Bowl. He was the starter, the Pro Bowl starter in 86. Lost his job to Doug Williams late in the season. Got it back again. Then lost it again in the playoffs. And he is struggling once again to become the starter for these Redskins. He's been told that he is competing for that role. First down and 10, the handoff goes to James Morris, a rookie from Michigan, the fourth round draft pick. Morris scrambles out close to the 40-yard line. Jamie Morris, a short, stocky running back, Michigan's all-time leading rusher, and of course, of course, Joe Morris, his younger brother, the talented one of the New York Giants, and this guy built an awful lot like Joe, although he's a little bit smaller even shorter than Joe and not quite as heavy as Joe and it'll be interesting to see how Jamie's able to stand up to the pounding that a running back takes during the NFL. He picks up nine plus and then barrels out over the 40 yard line to get the first down and looking a little bit like his older brother Joe Morris. Well he didn't have a very low squirting. Yeah, he really didn't have much of a chance there Frank. He had some sort of confusion in the backfield with Jay Schrader. They actually ran into one another and Morris was really lucky to get back anywhere near the line of scrimmage. Almost dropped the football. Gets the first down at the 41 yard line. Jay Schrader, 6'4", 215 pounders. Again, a celebrated story. Started his career as a baseball player out of UCLA. Lots of time for Schrader and he fires it over the middle of Don Horn that's tied in. Gets seven yards out of it. You want to know something why players would respect a coach like Joe Gibbs? Look at the team that's on the field with Jay Schrader. A lot of times a quarterback comes in on the second half of things and, and ends up playing with reserves and rookies. It's the first team Washington squad that's out there on the field right now. Jacoby and the whole line up front, Warren, Didier, Monk, Gary Clark. With the exception of Jamie Morris in the backfield, he's given Jay Schrader every chance to prove himself here in this situation. Good, good coaching by Joe Gibbs. Second down, long three. Schrader, Morris again. Setter steps, tries to break it back against the grain. He'll get a yard and a half out of that. And Hipper's flaring just a little bit on the field. Well, Clint Hittier there gave a little bit of a late shot to one of the Dolphins who was just coming in to inspect the pile and got treated a bit rudy, rudely. David Fry, and there was a, <laughs> an exchange of ancestries out there for yeah. just a brief moment. I think the coaching terminology that 
applicable there is keep your head on a swivel <laughs> at all times. At all times. Third down and one, the ball near midfield. Get here, the intended receiver and deflected. It was Doug Fetters who you could say is on the bubble here, Dan. Been around for a while, he's earning a lot of money, and they've been drafting defensive players for the last three years, these Dolphins have. Well, this guy's been such a solid player for so long for Miami. Well coached, knows that when he sees the quarterback cock his arm, get his own hand up in the air, and even though he was effectively blocked that time by McKenzie, look at the instinctive reaction to go up and bat the ball, and you're right. Doug Betters is going to end up playing football for another team in the NFL this fall. Because of Kumaro and because of Jeff Frost, another rookie, it looks like he might be moving hey, elsewhere. No good kick. Steve Cox, not a good kick, and it'll give Brady's an opportunity to return it. A good coverage. Hustling down there was Keith Griffin. Good effort by Griffin. Brady's goes down at the 16-yard line, 38-yard punt, and we'll be right back. Following the 1982 season, fourth quarter action, Miami leading Washington 17 to 13. Joe Seisman looks over the defense, hands the ball to John Riggins. He slips behind big Joe Jacoby, and to the outside, and he rolls 43 yards for the go-ahead touchdown. Washington defeating Miami 27 to 17. John Riggins, 166 yards, the Super Bowl MVP. Big John Riggins, the Super Bowl then abbreviated season for the Redskins. The Dolphins have returned every, as we return to Robbie Stadium for the first and ten near their own 16-yard line. And the quarterback is Dave Archer. Uh, Dave Archer, former starter for the Atlanta Falcons. As a matter of fact, when Dan Henning, the Redskins assistant coach, was the head coach there, it was Dave Archer who was his starting quarterback. And he looked awfully good in the London victory over the 49ers. Good athlete. Strong arm. He reminds me a lot of a former Dolphin quarterback, David Woodley, the same physical build, the same kind of athlete. Really more dangerous when he's running with the football than, than when he's throwing it. Tough to sack. Tried to spin out of the pocket under pressure, and, but not that tough to sack. Darryl Grant was there, and again, Charles Mann. As the Redskins continue to go with starters, even defensively. Mann again. Guess who? I think it's going to be Charles Mann getting it on this play, but when Archer drops back and he sees pressure, he really doesn't have much choice but to leave. Mann forces him to run the opposite direction, and effective upfield rush that time by Darrell Grant cuts it off at both ends. That's the way you contain a pocket, close it from the outside, and seal off any lane of escape. Looks like these guys have done it before. Off and back to the seven-yard line, middle screen, good call, and Davenport breaks the big out, close to the 20-yard line, he needed to get near the 21-yard line for the first down, he'll be just a little bit short. A call made out of desperation, effectively run by Miami, and well done by Davenport, but the pocket's collapsing, and this is an excellent call. Running the middle screen, Archer waited until the last moment to deliver it to Davenport, and then it's straight up field. Watch the collision between he and Alvin Walton right there. Helmet to helmet, you could hear that flare up in our booth. You get defensive linemen thinking safety. They're thinking we've got an easy shot at the passer. They give you the strong rush. You dump it over the heads with the screen, and you get the good return. But one yard short of the first down, and Reggie Roby will punt it away. Oliphant. goes down out of the 36-yard line. A, another rookie that Bobby Beathard, the brilliant general manager and personnel manager of the Redskins, is so high on. So the Redskins will have a first and 10. They'll be at their own 37-yard line when we come back. And 46 remaining in the third quarter from Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. The Dolphins and the Redskins tied at 10. The Redskins first and 10, their own 37-yard line. Jay Schrader stays on at quarterback. We'll see a lot of Schrader in this half. A lot of time, Schrader turns it loose underneath, gets the completion to the tight end, Don Warren, to the 43-yard line. Gain of about seven, and the Redskins all seemed to want, wanted a, they wanted a little 
stop the couple to go with their Super Bowl. Dan, and they came up with one. These rings get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we were inspecting the Washington Super Bowl ring that they received just a week ago, and it is unbelievable how large it is. The big flat surface, you could almost eat dinner on top of it. It looks like a, it's like a manhole cover with that guy. <laughs> it's uh, what every player in this game strives for. It'll never be missed. Second and three, Schrader, he's got a strong arm. Looking deep, Gary Clark. And I think Schrader thought he perhaps should have released that just a little earlier. Well, he was really a pretty good throw. Just, you know, when you're talking about throwing the football 60 yards in the air, and when you consider that it was probably overthrown by maybe a foot or 18 inches, uh, that's the kind of margins you're dealing with. Look at that throw by Jay Schrader. 12 inches less on the football, and Gary Clark probably has a touchdown. An effective job by Schrader of getting out of the pocket, buying a little more time, and nice effort by Clark. Just not to be, but that rattles the defense. That play will be effective for the next seven or eight they run. Third down, long three. Muck in motion, and Schrader is back once again. And this time, the clock is open once again, and Schrader off the fingertips once again. And again, he is been able to get open as Clark. The flag is down, but Rodney Thomas, a rookie from BYU, and we may get a defensive third. holding call here when it's thrown out of the secondary like that. Uh, Thomas now has been beaten twice, and they have been looking to Thomas to kind of bolt to the secondary. Number 57, defense, five yards, automatic first down. Very easy, a rookie from Arizona. When you see the flag coming out of the secondary, nine times out of ten, it's going to be defensive holding right off the bat. Talked about the problems with Schrader. He actually started ten games last year, and he had passed at a 48.3 percentage of completion. He had some real tough days. Did not ever blame it on the shoulder that was slightly separated in the first game. He just had a tough year. On first and ten, Schrader back again, a little play action bait, trying to go deep to Muck. And they're pushing and shoving along the sidelines, but no flat. Mock all tied up with Renee Thompson, third-year man out of Baylor that the Dolphins are also high on, and they're looking for some help in that secondary. I mentioned Rodney Thomas, Jarvis Williams, their second-round draft pick, and Renee Thompson. And that was Renee trying to and staying with Art Monk. Second down and 10. Redskins 48 yard line. Mount in motion once again. And Schrader back. Another flag dropped in the secondary. And as Dan has already pointed out, who usually gets the pass interference call as Rodney Thomas was again attempting to cover Gary Clark. Well, Clark has been open the last couple of times. Schrader's misconnected on a couple of passes. Thompson had good coverage last time on Clark. This time it's Rodney Thompson's Holding turn. Number 57 defense. Oh. Will be declined. Beasley First. again going for the hat trick. Beasley called for his second defensive holding on this drive. Gives the Skins two successive first downs. And that is not the way to endear yourself. Let's take a look at it here. It looks like he's holding Don Warren there to the left of your screen. Warren attempting to release, and Beasley just hog-tying him. That, that's very blatant. That's going to bring the flag every single time. He told the rookie from Arizona to cover Warren, and that's how he covered it. First down, Redskins following the penalty, and the handoff is to James Morris over the right side, and Morris finds a little gap and flips it down to the 30-yard line, or very close to the 30-yard line. The Denver Broncos cringe every time they see this play. The old counter rock. Watch the left side of the line pull. McKenzie, Jacoby up through the line. The little counter step by Morris. Back up to the inside. This is a play that Timmy Smith ran for a million miles against the Broncos in the Super Bowl. Clearly the, the staple of the Washington running game. And it doesn't look like a whole lot, but that pounded up in there for eight yards. Jamie Morris gets eight. Second down and two. And they work Morris again over the left side. He'll be close to a first down. 
Five seven and 185 pounds. Very close to his brother's numbers. Well, not close enough for the measurement. It was third down and still less than a yard. talk about the Redskins and their running game it's symbolic that we're talking about people like Bryant and Jamie Morris and Reeves and we're not talking about George Rogers the guy who's done the bulk of the work of this club since John Riggins day and he was released during the offseason by the Redskins Joe Gibbs just didn't think he had it anymore first and ten and it's Jamie Morris again works his way to the 21 yard line again of about a yard and a half Schrader looks over, picks up the call from the sideline. If you're under 5'10", I guess you inherently have to root for a guy like Jamie Morris. This is a game played by very big people. And you have to admire the small man who has the courage to get out there and compete. And not only compete, but do well. And it seems to, they're big genes, I think, in the Morris family. Looking for Didier, he has him at the 17 yard line, and Didier pulls up close to the 15 yard line. Short of the first down, hit there by Renee Thompson. Smith Didier did not have a great year receiving last year, but they were using a lot of three wide receiver offense for the Redskins. But he seems to be their clutch man, and particularly when they get down close, they love to go to Didier when they get down inside the 20 yard line. And they do it over and over. He has a knack of getting open. He has the size and the quickness. Tenth play of this drive coming up and a third down and a long three. Good loss by Schrader. Gets this ball up in the air. Ricky Sanders. They ruled him out of bounds. He comes down with the ball, but he called it out of bounds, and he says, no, I was in. Well, it's close. It's going to be real close. Man coverage to the near side against Ricky Sanders, and I think this is going to warrant a look from behind. Let's see if he got both feet in. Good Just time. man coverage that time. Both feet have to come down inbounds even in the end zone. There's one. Ooh, on the line. Is it on the line? It appears that it's awful close. <laughs> that is awful close. And I think we're going to get a replay on this. I have to assume by them stopping it that up in the replay booth, they're going to take a long, hard look at this. Al Sabato, our replay official tonight. And again, the catchphrase, the key phrase, indisputable visual evidence. And that's what they're looking at. It did appear as if he had the second foot. There is one. We'll get a better look here, I believe. There's right, the there's one. There's the catch. There's the one. Now he has to get the right foot down. and cannot touch that line. It appears that it's on the line. It's awful close, though. But again, I don't think that there's enough there to overturn the call, which was incomplete. I'll be very surprised if they overturn that. I think that play will stand as is. Interesting. In 1987, there were 490 plays that were closely reviewed, not necessarily stopping the game, and there were were only 57 reversals in 210 games, an average of one reversal in each four games. And this is the best look we're going to give them. It appears that his right foot, as it comes down, does make contact with the sideline. And that was the ruling of the official right there. Tough for him to be in much better position. Contact from Al Zapata, the instant replay official, goes to the umpire on the field. That's Dennis Briggs. Bob McElroy has the phone. Again, the catchphrase. Is it I'm indisputable visual evidence that 
he did not step on the line. That would be I'm the surprised. only way they could reverse it. I'm surprised it's taking this long. They want to be careful. Well, it's the preseason, Dan. We all have to break in a little bit. Well, they're looking. Well, when Bob McElwee now comes over it on might the be telephone, the they may be having a communication problem. Their radio signals that goes from the replay official to the umpire may have broken down. That's the only reason I can think of that McElwee has come over to talk to the booth. Start the game. could go over and ask Don Shula about it. We'll look at it one more time. From behind, even more so than from the front, it looks like the right foot clearly is touching some of the white that frames the out of bounds. In either case, it did look like it caught the out of bounds marker. I think they're telling us now that they are having a communication problem, and they did confirm that there was no catch right off the bat off of the replay. So they saw what we saw, and they're going to let the play stand. Bob is still trying to figure out the communication problem, I think. Why don't we write it down on a piece of paper and we'll sail it down? We know, yet Bob McElwee has just been informed that it was not a catch. And meanwhile, on fourth down, Ali Haji Sheik has come on. Sheik was good from 26 yards out of the second quarter. Sheik will try to untie this from 32 yards out. Lo Miller was the last one to attempt a field goal. He was wide right with a 47-yarder. Now it's Sheik's turn. Sheik is good again. And once again, the Redskins have taken the lead. 13 to 10 over the Miami Dolphins. 5.30 remaining in the third quarter, and we'll be back in Miami in a moment. Washington leading Miami. Preseason game, Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. We're in the third quarter with 5.30 remaining, and Chip Lomiller will put it in play for the Redskins. High kick, short kick. Taken by Sean Beals, the rookie from Idaho State. And Beals gets through the wedge at the 25 and gets out over the 30-yard line. And Miami will have a first and 10 at that point. Here's instant replay of another version. <laughs> this is Ricky Sanders on the sidelines while we were away explaining to his teammates one foot, two foot. I don't understand what these guys are looking at down there. Totally indisputable. I mean, that's... Uh, <laughs> you can laugh about it in preseason. I don't know if that'd be so funny uh, on Labor Day night when they're playing the Giants on our opening game. I, somehow I think the smile would be gone. Dave Archer. Barry Wilburn. Barry Wilburn out of bounds on Fred Banks, and it draws a lot of flags. Dave yep. Archer staying on a quarterback for Miami. That's number 86. 15 yards, first down. Call is against number 86. I think that has to be against Wilburn. Well, they're not calling Freddie Banks. I think he got <laughs> it. If that calls against Freddie Banks, now <laughs> well, he was really manhandling Wilburn, wasn't he? <laughs> Boy, come on, Freddie. Quit beating up on him like that. Well, rest assured, they marched the penalty off against the uh, Redskins. So uh, to <laughs> midfield, where it's first and 10 Miami. Number 45. Yeah. Boy, Number Bob. 45. A communication problem that time. Barry Wilburn. From McElwee's brain to his mouth. <laughs> first down Miami, midfield. They trail by three here in the third quarter. And a mix up in that backfield. Frank Middleton. Wally Klein, number 96, was in the Dolphin backfield by the time they snapped the ball. Here's where it can get a little raggedy as we start to see a lot of substitutes coming in and out. Playing in the heat of a real game for the first time as a unit on both sides, and that's what you see in preseason. Second down to 12, Archer. Hands off to Davenport, and Davenport backed up over the left, left side. Maybe gets a yard out of it before Mel Kaufman makes the stop. Talked about this Redskins defense. Dexter Manley again suspended for drug abuse. 
the 30 days. He'll be back on August the 27th. That's Dexter's second stage in the substance abuse agreement the NFL has with the Players Association back in 1982. And, of course, one more, and Dexter knows what that would be, and that would be banned from play for a year. He wouldn't even be able to appeal to come back for one year. Archer fires, and it's complete. There's the Scotch Waities, and Waities inside the 35-yard line to the 32-yard line. And a good, a good setup and a good delivery. Look at the technique, the good form, the follow-through that time by David Archer. And a timing pattern, Waities with his break, has the ball there waiting for him. That's the kind of stuff that Don Shula is looking for out of Archer. This is a passing game that's very rhythm-oriented. Dan Marino likes quick, sharp break by his wide receivers. This is not much of an improvising offense. And David Archer, who scrambled a lot of his career, can't do that here in Miami. Archer trying to get the ball out to Sean Beals, and he got himself all tied up there with the empty back Johnny Thomas. And it's incomplete. Archer was a two-year starter for the Atlanta Falcons. Under Dan Henning, who left the Redskins following their last Super Bowl. They came back last year, and they went to the Super Bowl once again. And Archer, meanwhile, was released earlier this year and picked up by the Miami Dolphins. Second down and 10. We may have had a delay of game there. Or movement, or take your pick. All start, <laughs> 77, offense. Still second down. That's Lewis Cheek over on the left side, who has had himself a very interesting night. One of the eighth-round draft picks, one of three at the start of this game on the offensive line for John Sandusky, the offensive line coach, who told me tonight, he said, in their combined experience, they have two years. Well, they like Cheek. There's a lot to like. 6'6", 295. But he, they think he's got the physical tools to play in the NFL. You've got to be more than big. You've got to have the footwork. You've got to have the speed, the balance to go with it. They think Lewis Cheek does. Second down at 15. Archer, good protection. Tries to get the ball to Frank Middleton. Are there any little ones around anymore, Dan? Little what? Little offensive linemen. Oh, there are some short ones. But uh, most of the guys, you, you know, it used to be in the old days that a guard had to do a lot of running. So while you always had big tackles, your guard sometimes could weigh 240 and 250 pounds. But, you know, the old Green Bay sweep is a thing of the past. You seldom see the guards out in front anymore. And so the guards are built for pass protection. They're in the 270, 280, 290 range. So in reality, the Lions now are 280 up. Third and 15, Archer overthrows Frank Middleton. And that'll bring up a fourth down and smattering of booze. Archer way off the target there. Well, and again, it could be. You never know whether Middleton should have taken it upfield. You, you don't really know when you look down. And Archer just looked up the field at Middleton and just shook his head. In any event, it brings on Quad Rebays for the field goal attempt. And it'll be a healthy one. 54 yards will be the official call if he makes it. And just a little short. The Bay's not the long field goal kicker as we have seen around the league, but very accurate from inside the 40. He misses from 54. Dottie for the Miami Dolphins talking with Don Shula and really have not done much defensively around here since Bill Arnsparger went on. This is the man really on the spot to put the defense back together. Former University of Miami defensive coach. Came in last year. And things did improve last year, but they are going to need a lot more improvement. Finishing 26 out of 28 in yards allowed to the National Football League on defense a year ago, the Miami Dolphins. Redskins have a first and 10 at their own 37-yard line. Trader, Didier, lets to go through the fingertips, and a late hit will draw the flag. And the late hit against David Fry. Well, let's, let's take a good look and see how late this was. It was a very poor pass from Jay Schrader. 
the ball to Didier was just out of the area altogether and the ball obviously now is going to stand against Fry but a poor pass from Jay wasn't hurried at all and the ball just takes off and sails away Didier relatively wide open and came to a stop and Fry comes up and gives him a shoulder and frankly I've I've seen a lot worse than that go without a flag you used to see a lot worse than that that was hardly what I would call a light threatening blow to Clint Didier by David Fry. Particularly when you consider that Didier goes about 6'5", weighs about 240. I think he might survive that. We have 252 remaining in the third quarter and the penalty will give the Redskins a first and 10 near the 47 yard line of the Miami Dolphins. Redskins on top, 13 to 10. Raider and Jamie Morris turns the corner and gets good yardage inside the 40. Gain of about eight. Get some of that, Jamie Morris. Get some of that grass out of your face mask, Jamie. He's tough kid. Tough kid. His older brother performing up in against the Jets tonight for the Giants. His Redskins on their way to a showdown early then with the Giants. Opening night for us, September the 5th, Labor Day night at the Meadowlands. The Skins and the Giants. Second down and two. Morris again, big opening right side inside the 35-yard line. First down, Redkin. Preseason continues for the Redskins. They'll be going against the Raiders in L.A. next Saturday night. Then their final preseason game will be against Atlanta at Birmingham, August the 27th, and then that big opener on Monday night, September the 5th, against the Giants. a nice opening to the 25 yard line now there's a good look at a back that comes from a high-tech program like michigan where you are caught when you cut back cover up the football a good look at jamie morris who started wide on the pitch came back to the inside you notice right before he took that hit he covers up the ball with both arms five feet seven inches big he runs big he runs with power and I think we'll get a good look at it here. Watch him make the cut back to the inside. Keeps his feet underneath him. And there, look at him cover up that football before he takes a hit. Good technique by a running back. And he collects eight out of it. It'll be second down and two. Morris again. This time, nothing doing. Tried to get to the outside. And Jackie Klein was there defensively for the Dolphins. And yet you saw Klein wrap up Morris, and yet Morris still had the strength to to break free enough to stretch out and probably pick up two yards getting back towards the line. And he gets the first down. Pretty good average. Four and a half, 4.8 yards. You're on the other side of four in this league. You're doing all right. Good drive of the Redskins. And the principal weapon has been Jamie Morton, the rookie from Michigan. Don Warren and he cannot handle it incomplete and that will bring up the final play of the third period and another pass from Schrader that uh, oh you wonder what's going through Jay's head he's really just having difficulty throwing the ball that's the end of the third quarter and we'll be returning to Joe Robbie Stadium first this message coming up about an upcoming show on ABC and then a word from your local station stay with us doesn't even remember 17 and 0 1972 Bob Greasy Nick Bonacani he's a Dolphin fan he may play for the Dolphins someday never know they begin the fourth quarter and the Redskins are inside the 25 yard line of the Dolphins they have a second down and 10 they have a three point lead Trader fires another low one trying to get the ball out to Anthony Allen Goes it low and behind, and this is where he's struggling. This is where a quarterback, you know, it's like a golfer that you play a whole round and you hit the ball really well, and then you play three or four holes, and 
and every ball you hit either slices or hooks or or something wrong with it and, and that's Schrader is going through one of those periods right now I don't know if he's guiding the ball too much but he just just made six or seven bad passes in a row four out of eleven Jay Schrader third down and eleven the ball squeezing it in to Oliphant. Well when you finally make a good one make it in the end zone for a touchdown. Mike Oliphant the rookie from Puget Sound. And that's what Schrader just did. The blitz came that time. David Fry came from the outside. Jay reads it. His receivers read it. Look how it gets man coverage in the secondary and that time he's working against Renee Thompson. Falls back to the inside but Found a hole. A good throw this time by Jay Schrader. Good he delivery. needed it. Good he concentration it. by Oliphant. Yep. And the Oliphant spike. Ricky from Puget Sound. He's only 173 pounder, and he has looked awfully good this far for the Redskins. No Miller. Top rookie draft pick. Drills it through for the conversion. We'll be back in just a moment. Miami. We're in the fourth and final period of the Redskins have taken a 20 to 10 lead. Jay Schrader connecting with Mike Oliphant, the rookie third round draft pick out of Puget Sound, who Redskins were able to find in that third round because he dislocated a hip a year ago. It's been bothering him here in training camp, but he looked awfully good on that touchdown shot from Schrader. Sean Beal, rookie from Idaho State, brings it out for Miami, breaks the tackle at the 25-yard line and sprints out over the 30-yard line. Coming up next Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports will continue to follow the road to Seoul as Coca-Cola presents the U.S. Olympic Men's Gymnastics Trials. This event was highlighted by some very dramatic performances by Tim Daggett, trying to make the team shattered leg in the World Championships last October. Dan Hayden also had a dramatic story there, plus the Traverse Stakes in the Arlington Million. Horse race is coming to you live, except on the West Coast. The action beginning at 4 o'clock Eastern Pacific, 3 o'clock Central. That's next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Dave Archer remains at quarterback. 48, kicking team, penalty declined, first down. An offside against the Skins, and of course with the good return that time by Beals. Miami will decline and take the good field position. Anytime you're on the far side of that 30-yard line, a nice place to get started. First and 10 Miami at their own 31-yard line. Archer looks as if he's trying to change the play. And perhaps it's a little early in the year for that sort of thing. He changed it, but nobody else changed with him. Last week, Miami played a game up in Chicago at Soldier Field, and they experienced some real difficulty with a new grass field that was laid at Soldier Field a couple of months ago, and the roots haven't yet taken hold, and the turf was coming up in giant chunks. This was the grounds crew frantically trying to put it back together while the Bears and the Dolphins were at the other end of the field, and now, Frank, there's a story surfacing that they may not be able to play their remaining exhibition game and their home opener. Archer unloads it to Tom Kelleher after scrambling around on a second down and 10. He was hit by Kurt Lueva. Well, let's see now if they rule it a completed pass and a fumble. It looks like that's the deal. Looks like the Skins are going to come away with the football. Okay. Right again, Archer chased out of the pocket. This will be the first turnover tonight, and Archer now dumps it off, completes the pass. Gouveia comes up with the football, hits, makes the contact, and comes up with the football. And the Redskins will have a first and 10 at the 38-yard line. The rule here is the receiver has to take possession of the football and get both feet on the ground while he has possession. Well, from that angle, Kelleher's still fighting with the football, but clearly had both feet on the ground. Thomas on the recovery following the hit by Gouveia. Redskins on first down and 10. 
Jamie Morris once again gets to the line of scrimmage and that's it. The Skins going with still a good number of their first string people in there. They've made some changes on the line up front. But Joe Gibbs with a 10 point lead would like to add to it. They got handled pretty good last week by Pittsburgh. Trailing 31 to 6 at the half. And I think this is the type of performance he'd like to see. Danny Morris working tonight. And Morris gets inside the 35 yard line. Gain of about eight yards and it'll bring up a third down and four. A lot of games going on around the National Football League this evening. Some final scores for you. Dallas over the Raiders, Cleveland over Tampa Bay, Green Bay over Indianapolis. That's at halftime. In the fourth quarter, Cincinnati leads Buffalo and in the fourth quarter is Kansas City over Atlanta, 24 to 10. Houston leading New England in the third quarter. The Jets and Giants are tied in the third. Cross City rivalry. And Denver leads the third period. Third down and four for the Redskins. Schrader hits it out to Terry Orr. Or close to another first down. They try and highball and see how close he is to the first down. Looks like they're going to have to bring the sticks across the field. A little Crisper delivery that time by Jay Schrader, who I'm sure had his confidence void after his touchdown pass to Oliphant. They bring it out. It's kind of look forward to the Redskins schedule. We talked about it earlier, and it's dynamite with the change in the scheduling of division champions that takes effect this year. But many people are picking the Giants over the Redskins, and the Giants have a much weaker schedule, at least on paper, than the Redskins. Yeah, you'd have to go back in NFL history, I think, quite a ways to find a defending champion who the following year uh, wasn't even picked uh, to win their own division and, and clearly the consensus this year is that the Giants will win the NFC East and there's why look at the difference in the two schedules the red asterisk behind the Giants opponent all of them last place teams and instead of Detroit twice and Atlanta Jets and Kansas City the Redskins have to play people like Pittsburgh and Houston and Cleveland and the Bears, a uh, lot, of, lot of talent there on the Redskins schedule. It doesn't appear on the Giants schedule. Fourth down, short yardage, Redskins. Trader lifts it over. And hands off to Willard Reed, who is hit right at the line of scrimmage and drilled all the way back. It was Mark Brown initially there for the Dolphins, and they are saying, no, he did not make it. Brown's made his share of big plays for the Dolphins, had an interception last week, and boy, that time played it perfectly. And they are not even going to bother with the measurement. As Reeves is hit, and hit hard by Mark Brown. Short of the first down. Good tackle by Brown, good effort. Reeves this time running a little bit up and down on a short yardage situation. You'd like to get your shoulders a little lower to the ground, but give Mark Brown the credit. He makes the play. Dolphins Hugh Green, and it's not the knee that's troubling him. He has a pair of broken ribs. He's out for a few days. And they say when he came to training camp this year, he looked like the Hugh Green of old, and they'll need it. Archer unloads the bomb. Time to go deep to Fred Banks, and Banks do some solid coverage back there. African Grant, rookie from Illinois, solid coverage. That's a good throw from Archer, who really not known for his long passing skills, but the man to man from Grant, and he's going to get some help coming across in the middle from Steve Gage. But the ball a little underthrown, and there's a bit of a bump by Grant. But I think something we're going to see a lot this year is a little more leeway given by those deep officials in the passing game. Don't be alarmed to see a little more contact being made this year and fewer flags. I think they're going to loosen it up a little bit. Archer back again on second and ten. Tried to time it out with Kurt Scott Swades. And good coverage on the part of Johnny Thomas. He was right with him all the way. And I think that Archer saw that at the last minute. And when he let the ball go, sailed it over his head on purpose. 
as Thomas looking right in the eyes of Schwedes, and Schwedes gave him move to the outside, an upfield move, and then broke it at the sidelines, and Thomas was with him all the way. Yeah, give Dave Archer some credit there. He read that coverage, knew he had no chance of completing it. Why run the risk of an interception? That's, that's a throwaway all the way. Third and ten. Archer steps back in the pocket, fires it complete. Ball comes out of the arms of Frank Middleton, who is short of the first down. And we are in the fourth quarter with 11.27 remaining. And Miami down by 10. But they still will send out Hunter Reggie Roby. As anticipated. Looks like we've got a little conference going on down here. And Bob McElroy says fourth down. I see Reg Reggie has substituted his wristwatch for a wristband on a warm night in Florida. He gets the sweat. <laughs> Maybe his watch doesn't work well in humidity. Whoa! And a good handle by Roby. And a wonderful catch. Whoa, he hit one. Mike Oliphant dances around. The flag goes down, and Oliphant goes down at the 17-yard line. But Reggie Roby... Not, not only was that one all together. Frank, not only did he stab that ball and save a disastrous play, but he got the ball away so quickly that I don't think any of his uh, punt coverage team got flagged for being downfield early. Got off a 51-yard effort, but again, the flag is down. Bob McElwee talking it over. I mean, this flag occurred somewhere during the return. Holding against Washington was a preliminary indication. But often when you see any sort of a bad snap, what happens is someone releases early and goes downfield. Now, this is one of the advantages of having a tall punter. Holding number 54 on the receiving team. Oh, he went up. After Look at Roby go up. Stop the ball's progress, field it, and then on one step, get it away. Not bad. A 51-yard effort. So, boot. That... No that punish. doesn't That's come it. easy. That doesn't come easy. And holding against the Redskins, they are backed up inside their seven-yard line. 6'2", 242, Reggie Roby, and he needed every inch of it there. You know, if he had his watch on, he might not have been able to jump that high. Oh, Dan, that's good stuff. That's color. It's also the fourth quarter of a preseason game. <laughs> 7.02 remaining. Redskins on first down, and once again, they work Jamie Morris. And Morris responds with a good effort, out close to the 15-yard line. Gain of eight, it'll be second down and two. I think Jamie Morris is getting his first extensive look of this preseason, and I think that he's impressing the Redskins coaching staff. I think everyone knew that he came from the program at Michigan that taught him the fundamentals, and I think he's showing them what they needed to see, that he's got the toughness to play in this league. Morris again, and Morris will have the first down out over the 20-yard line. Frank, you, you've run the ball enough times to know that oftentimes a running back, when he gets in that situation the Morris was in right there, where things kind of logged up a little bit in front of him, a lot of running backs have a tendency to want to bounce to the outside to try to make something happen. But look what Morris did that time. Instead, he lowered his head, lowered his shoulders, and moved the pile forward a couple of yards. That's, that's not the type of running you'd expect from a guy the size of Jamie Morris. Jamie gets the first down. Interesting, too, Dan. We'll watch Jamie, if he makes his ball club, go against his brother on opening night. Bill Morris, of course, with the Giants. Little brother Jamie, at least at this point, with the Redskins as a fourth-round draft pick. But he does have the talent, and he obviously comes from a, a good program. Exactly what you were saying. When you need the yardage, you have to have it. You don't try to dance to the outside because in this game today, they are just too quick. Because these linemen slide along that line of scrimmage, and the linebackers can move along so quickly. It'll be second down at six. Morris again. And again, a 
fine effort by Morris as he keeps it alive out to the 35-yard line, another first down. I guess the question we have to ask here is, where will Mr. and Mrs. Morris sit when the Giants and the Skins play? I guess one might have to wear a Skins jersey and the other a, a Giants jersey. Must, uh, must be quite a feeling to have two sons so athletically talented as, as Joe and Jamie. And, and you wonder how many offensive backs that Joe Gibbs will keep. And you have Kelvin Bryant, you have Timmy Smith, you have to keep Griffin, we haven't even seen tonight. There's a lot of things. You have a Willard Reeves, the Canadian star. As we look at Morris again. Well, he's been busy tonight. Well, I, I think what you talked about, the number of backs that the Skins can keep is limited. And I think that they had to find out about Jamie Morris. He's one of those guys that, that's competing for that fifth spot. If five is the magic number, and it'll be somewhere between four and six. And Joe Gibbs told us today that it, it probably will be five. I don't know. If Jamie Morris is the sixth guy, something tells me that Gibbs might be coerced into keeping six running backs. I, I can't see him letting Jamie Morris go. Morris has 81 yards on 17 carries tonight. His older brother, Joe Morris, he likes to run the ball. The more times, the better. Bill Parcells didn't think that when Jamie's older brother, Joe Morris, came up to the Giants a few years ago. He was small in stature, and Bill Parcells didn't think he could work him that much. And all of a sudden, remember, he used to tell us, well, he just can't go that many times. All of a sudden, he get, would give it to him 25, 30 times a game, and he just got better every time he carried it. Well, and I think Joe Gibbs just did a smart deal there, taking Jamie Morris out of the ball game. He made his point. 85 yards, 18 carries. Almost five yards a carry. That's, that's getting it done. Third down and five. Less than seven minutes remaining in the game. Mike Oliphant comes in. The third round draft pick out of Houston Town. Replays him more. That's Oliphant. That's the first down and much more. Like a touchdown. Like all the way. Mike Oliphant. Bobby Beathard is very high on Mike Oliphant. I wonder why. He his hip. A year ago, nobody really thought much about him. He had a tremendous career at a tiny little college called Puget Sound. And Beathard went for him in the third round, and he's a spectacular return man, and we also know that he can do other things. Well, it's right out of the backfield, and the Dolphins, again, very loose in their coverage, and they tried to trail a, a man behind him, and Oliphant sent the void to the outside of the field, and... Well, I tell you what, just outruns Renee Thompson to the end zone. Wasn't Thompson's coverage to begin with, don't get me wrong there, but he was the closest guy and didn't close on Oliphant at all. And a good read and a quick delivery by Jay Schrader. Well, the Redskins extend their lead. Ali Ajishi as the place-kicking duties are being alternated tonight. Uh, Joe Gibbs. Take a look at it again. Schrader reads it quickly, fires it in, and then it is Mike Oliphant on his way, showing a lot of speed. 5'9", 173 pounders, trying to find his way in the National Football League. Dynamite finish tomorrow, the PGA Championship. And getting ready to come into the ballgame is Kerwin Bell, a rookie seventh-round draft pick, quarterback from the University of Florida, where he shattered a lot of records out there. He's the other quarterback in contention. And out comes John Beals of Idaho State. And Kerwin Bell will take over the Dolphin offense. As they'll have a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Bell over 7,500 yards in his career at the University of Florida. He'll be with a rousing ovation from this Florida crowd. He threw for 56 touchdowns. He's a four-year starter at the University of Florida. Set yardage and touchdown record for the Southeast Conference. And here he is. 6.28 remaining in the game. Dell back on first down and all pumped up. He fires it over Scott Schwede's 
extended arm, and he's yeah, buried he is down. He's buried in a blitz right off the bat. That's that's known as a Richie Pettibone welcome to the National Football League. You get a rookie in there, a new quarterback, you can you'll see it every time. 17-point lead. Why not rub a little salt in an open wound and give him a treat? And there's Richie who says, well, I tell you what, I don't care how many records this guy's got in the SEC or how many touchdowns he's thrown. He hasn't done squat against my club. And let's, let's put him on his back a couple times and see how he throws from there. Let's make it smart. Blitz again. Second and ten. <laughs> time he fires the ball out. As the blitz is on once again, and it goes out to Michael James. Keep in mind, look at Don Shula down there yelling at the officials saying, hey, he's still on his feet. There's such a thing as forward progress involved, and if the official feels that the forward progress has been halted, he's going to blow his whistle. How many miles done for Don Shula over those 26 years? Now watch this. Here comes the tackle. Johnny Thomas. And it's over right there. Now watch. He never does hit the ground. His knee never does go down. But the whistle is already blown. James, his forward progress was stopped. And the official, I think, correctly blew the whistle. Third and four. And Bell is hammered. Dean Hamill there first. Hamill, who alternates at the defensive right side. That tackle was Daryl Grant. Gets the sack and is a loss back to the 26-yard line. It will bring up fourth down. Reggie Roby is on once again. He'll be loose. Mike Oliphant, deep for the Redskins. This time it slides off the side of... Reggie Roby's foot and Oliphant very wisely lets it take a bounce. He gives up four or five yards, but there's no risk involved. And the Redskins will have a first and ten at the 31 yard line. 43 yard punt, Reggie Roby. I know Chuck Banker, the special teams coach of uh, the Skins, pretty well. And Oliphant's going to get chewed out for that. That little backwards dance he did getting away from the ball as it was skipping around. He's going to be told, don't you be anywhere near that football when it's bouncing. One bad bounce. You trip and stumble backwards, and that ball hits you, and then it's a free ball, and they'll recover it. Uh, that'll be some fodder for the films when... He did the right thing to let it bounce. Now, what Dan is saying, get out of there. Get out of there. In other words, jump off to the side. This little maneuver right here, you trip, you fall, anything bad. If it can happen, it will. New quarterback for the Redskins is Dan Humphreys, and he hands off to Willard Reed. The... Canadian expatriate who has moved out of the Canadian Football League into the National Football League, at least for Reeves, hopefully so. Humphrey, a rookie out of Northeast Louisiana, rookie sixth round draft pick. Had big numbers out of Louisiana. But this guy, this guy's going to have to pull a rabbit out of a hat to make this ball club. With William Trader and Rippon, it, it's going to be tough for Humphrey. Stepping it out over the 40-yard line. He'll get the first down at the 41-yard line. I believe the Redskins have had three first-round draft picks in 20 years. And, of course, their players, they've made the most of the three that they've had with Monk May and, and Daryl Green. But in their other drafts, they have really done well with, with what they've had. You have to give current GM Bobby Beathard credit. But, you know, that the lack of draft choices goes back to George Allen, who believed that... What was this saying? The future is now. Trade them all away for players. Reeves again to the outside. Moving up to about the 48-yard line. It's going to be a gain of six. You know, what are you going to do if you're Joe Gibbs in this backfield situation with, uh, with the skins? You know, you got Timmy Smith, Kelvin Bryant, Jamie Morris, Oliphant, Willard Reeves. And a couple of veterans we really haven't seen much of tonight, Reggie Branch, Keith Griffin. Uh, you know, you've got some guys here that uh, all can play in this league, and certainly not all of them are going to make this ball club. Or aren't those great problems? They can deal with them, maybe? Yeah, unless you're one of those guys. Then it's, then it's a real problem. Second down and four. Reeves, he pops the big hole to the right side and gets it down to the 40-yard line of the Dolphins. Darvis Williams 
the rookie out of Florida made the hit. There's the counter gap again, pulling the two linemen from the other side. I would have to think that the other teams in the league would get the, they'd petition the league to get the Redskins to stop running this play. They just, they murder everybody with it. Doesn't work that way. They'll all be running it. Well, I don't know. They, they all do run it, but they don't none, have those people. None seem to be as effective as the Redskins do. Reeves, 5'11", 200 pounder out of Northern Arizona. Tried in Green Bay in 1982. Didn't make it. Went up to Canadian League and made it big there. He's getting a long look-see, and he gets the first down inside the 41-yard line of the Dolphins. Humphreys tries to get it up to Ricky Sanders as Joe Gibbs, as Dan pointed out a while ago, staying with his key people to get a good look and a real look at young Stan Humphreys, a quarterback. Ricky Sanders in there on the receiving end. Make it up, moving around. The toughest part of coaching might not be the year you take your team to the Super Bowl. Quite possibly it could be the year after your team goes to a Super Bowl and wins it. I kind of sense that in our talk with Bill Gibbs yesterday. That it, it's not been real easy for him. Humphrey. Good drop. Set up quickly. Gets it to the 35-yard line to Mark Gehring. And Gehring will be short of the first down as the two-minute warning is sounded. Here's Gehring in his second year out of Eastern Washington as we are seeing a lot of not the big names of this world of pro football. We're in the late going here in Miami. The biggest defensive back that ever played, Richie Pettibone. <laughs> Put a I, few dents on my helmet. Whoa, a tough man. As Kerwin Bell just found out, uh, no great period in this league. He, he is some kind of a defensive coordinator. He's one of the best around. He has been for years. Been with the Redskins since 1978. Became the head of the defense when Joe Gibbs came in eight years ago. They're down at five for the Redskins in the final two minutes. Humphrey delivers one out into the flat, and he goes to Mike Oliphant, who is not hurting his chances of making this team tonight at all. And Rodney Thomas, that's the way you make an open field tackle. There's the way you stick somebody. That's halting their forward progress the they minute like you make contact with them. Along with Jarvis Williams, another rookie, they certainly do like Rodney Thomas here with the Dolphins. So Robbie Stadium, it'll be the site of Super Bowl 23 in January. Tribute to Joe Robbie, who fought and hustled and finally got this stadium built, and it is a beauty. Beating just under 75,000. Richard Reeves takes it to the 25-yard line. And Joe Gibbs will have a very pleasant problem when he looks at the video of this game. He is one of the fine performances by young running back. You know, Frank, we went into this game with a lot of questions. And as we see that no team has ever played in a Super Bowl in their home stadium, and I don't know what the Vegas odds are, but uh, don't look for it this year either. Reeves again inside the 25-yard line as the final second tick off here. Joe Robbie Stadium. When we talk about Miami and, and one of the questions they had to look at coming into tonight's game was are they able to do anything on the defensive line of scrimmage? Are they able to pressure the quarterback? And I'd have to say that Washington really dominated tonight up front. And that's where what that's where Miami somehow has to improve defensively. They have to put pressure on the opposing team's offensive line and their quarterback, and tonight they really weren't successful. They had so much hope that Hugh Green will return to form. He was playing so well before he damaged his wrist. They also have hope for John Boza, who could not go tonight. The number one draft pick, a defensive end from a year ago, out with an ankle injury. Not only hopes, they have got to have it. As you look at Dan Marino, offering his congratulations. Doug Williams, but most of the way in the first half, looked sharp in doing so. Shaking hands there with Scott Brantley, a fellow who just joined the Dolphins, but they were teammates in Tampa Bay. How long ago that must seem. Once again, the final score, the Washington Redskins defeat the Miami Dolphins 27 to 10. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by the pride inside every Plymouth. Designed in and built in, Plymouth, the pride inside. 
Reminder, tomorrow, ABC Sports features live, exclusive 18-hole coverage of the conclusion of the 1988 PGA Championship. And then next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Coca-Cola presents the U.S. Olympic Men's Gymnastic Trial. Plus, it's horse racing action with the Travers Stakes and the Arlington Million. You'll see it live, except on the West Coast. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. We'll see you next Monday night from Dallas.